Hello friend, welcome back. In this video, I will discuss about what is MBC and its benefits. First of all, what is MBC? MBC is a programming design pattern or methodology which separates your application presentation from your business logic. In MVC, you will get three components. One is M for the model, V is for the view, and C is for the controller. Every component of each part are designed to perform a specific task. Now let's talk about benefits of the MVC. First benefit of the MVC is reusability. It means one of the block portion of your code, you can use it over the project for several times. Second, you can easily maintain this application. Third benefit of the MVC is many developer work at a time without interrupting one another. Fourth, MVC supported text driven development. TTD in short. It means like in your project, if you complete one block of portion or complete total development, then you can test this part individually. Let's check this with an example. Like when you browse one of the URL from your browser like facebook.com and click on the enter, then what exactly happened behind the scene? Your request go to the Facebook server. Then Facebook server inquiry this request from their data source, which we call as database. So it will inquiry this request and fetch some of the appropriate data and send this data to the server. And then server depend on your data will be visible in your browser screen by HTML formatted source. So now this process if we match with the MVC, when you see this HTML page in your browser, it's a view. Then server work as controller. Cause it will decide your data request. Like when you enter the facebook.com, then it will show you the Facebook homepage. And when you click on the Facebook timeline, then it will redirect it to your Facebook timeline page. And the database we define as model. Hope it will give you some idea how MVC work. Literally, I will show you that things with practical work. So, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In this video, I will show you where you will get all the necessary project file and complete project source files. For finding out our project file which I used in particular that course, you have to go to your course contain and there is a section 1 as the introduction. And here there is a section 3 as the exercise file for download. And here also they have one of the option as the resources and that is the exercise file.gif. So whatever the materials I used on particular that course, you will get all the things into this folder. So that is the zip file first of all you have to download it and then you have to extract that file and when you extract that file then you will get this type of some of the folder one is the mdb file that is a zam file that means that if you want to update your php version then you can work with this one so i will already discuss about that things with you how you can update your localhost php version and also there is a project backup file and into the project backup file here, there is a two type of project. That is a Laravel 6 code project, all that source file with the SQL file. And also there is a user authentication system, all that file you will get from to this folder. I hope this all that file will help you a lot. I will try to keep this course up to date all the time. And I will add more videos related with Laravel 6 for you. I am here for help you as much as I can. So don't hesitate to let me know about your issues. I will be in your chat. So, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. PHP is one of the oldest and most popular web development language and Laravel is its most popular framework. In this video, I will discuss about why. The PHP scripting language has a variety of frameworks with robust technical capabilities such as Laravel, Symfony, Coordinator, E, Falcon, CakePHP, Zen, and Slim, etc. Yet Laravel has retained the top position on the list of the top PHP MVC frameworks. If you go to the Google trend and compare Laravel with other all frameworks, then this result will surprise you. The following screen shows the trend over the last 5 years of selecting PHP frameworks on Google Trends. 
The graph above clearly shows how Laravel has increasingly become popular as compared to the other PHP web frameworks over the last 5 years. So what is the reason to gain such a huge popularity and how it's cover all the things that your web application needs. First of all, Laravel is a fast development lifecycle and less code functionalities. It's easy to learn, making web application faster, configuration errors and exception handling, automation testing work, URL routing configuration is very high in Laravel, schedule task configuration and management, it has huge community and unlimited resource. If you face any issues, you will get a lot of resource from the Google and from the Laravel forums. And most importantly, it's very easy to get a job if you have Laravel skill. In our next video, I will take you a deep dive into what exactly is Laravel and the reason why Laravel remains the leading PHP frameworks even today. So, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In this video, I will take you deep dive into what exactly is Laravel and the reason why Laravel remaining the leading PHP framework even today. So let's discuss about Laravel features. First of all, it's MVC support and object-oriented approach. The first and best advantage of using Laravel framework is that it flows. Model, view and controller based architectural pattern and it has an expensive beautiful syntax which makes it object-oriented. Then built in authentication and authorization. Laravel provides an out-of-the-box configuration for the authentication and authorization system. That is, in just a few artisan commands, your application will be equipped with secure authentication and authorization. Then packaging system. A packaging system deals with the multiple support software or libraries that help the web applications to automate the process. Laravel uses Composer as a dependency manager which manages all the information needs to multiple packages. Packages are a great way to accelerate development is to provide the functionality we need out of the box. Then multiple file system. Laravel also has a built-in support for the cloud storage system such as Amazon S3 and Rack Space Cloud Storage and of course for local storage. It's amazingly simple to switch between this storage option as the API remains the same for each system. One can use these three systems into one application to serve file from multiple locations like in a distributed environment. Then Artisan Console. Laravel has its own command line interface called as Artisan. Common uses of Artisan include publishing package asset, managing database migration, shading and generating boilerplate code for new controller, models and migration. This feature frees to development the creating proper code escalators. Then Eloquent ORM. The Eloquent ORM is Laravel built-in ORM implementation. Laravel has the best object relation mapper as compared to the other framework out there. This object oriented mapper allow you to interact with your database object and database relationship using expressive syntax. Then template engine. Laravel comes with the inbuilt template engine known as the blade template engine. Blade templating engine combine one or more templates with a data model to produce resulting views. Doing that by transferring the templates into cache PHP code for improved performance. And then testing. When it comes to the testing of the application, Laravel by default providing the unit test for the application, which itself contains tests that detect and prevent regression in the framework. Integration of PHP units such as testing framework is very easy in Laravel application. There have so many features in Laravel, I have highlighted some of the features with you. So, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In this video, I will discuss about course and development prerequisite. That means before starting this course, what you should know. You should know the basic PHP, basic object-oriented PHP fundamentals, basic HTML and CSS, and also basic bootstrap. I suggest you to pick tutorials based on this concept first to gain a better understanding of Laravel. For the course prerequisite, I will create this project with PHP. So you will need one local host server. For the local host server, you can use XAMPP, WAMP, 
vertigo, mam, whatever you like. But I will be used XAM for all over the project. And also for the development references, you will need one text editor or IDE, like Sublink text editor, Visual Studio Code, NetBeans, PHP Storm, Atoms, etc. All this editor is totally free software. All that you have to do, you have to download this and install it in your system. I will be using Sublink text editor for this project. That's all you will need for starting this course. If you are ready, then let's get started. Hello friend, welcome back. Before install that latest Laravel version in your local host, you have to update your local host PHP version. Like if you go to that Laravel official website and here if you go to that documentation and into the documentation there is a server requirements. So if you click on the server requirements and here you can see the PHP version should be equal or higher with the 7.2.0. So if you are already using that latest version of PHP in your local host then it should be okay. Rather than how can update your local host PHP version in this video I will show you that things with a live example. I will work this project into the local host and for the local host I am using the XAMPP. And XAMPP is the free local host server and that is totally free if you go to that Google and here if you search with the XAMPP download and from to these positions like they have some of the links like here if you open it and from here you can download that XAMPP like that is our 7.1 and 3 there is a PHP version is 7.1 and also that is another one so it depends on your windows if you are using that windows then you can download that things from here that is for the linux that is for the os okay so whatever the version you actually need you can download that things from here it's pretty much easy one of the things first of all you have to do you have to download it and then you have to just install it and after that install you get this type of one of the box and here first of all you have to do you have to run your apache and the mysql like if you click on the start and here I also want to start our MySQL. So when you will be start two of these then if you uh, put that as a local host like here I just define that local host then you get that type of one of the page. And into the page here if you go to the PHP info and into the PHP info right now I am using the PHP version 5.4. So how can update it, how can update your local host PHP version in this video, I will show you that things with a live example. So now let's get started. I already installed that XAMPP, so here I already installed it. So for the reasons now I want to update it for doing this, like they have the one of the resource as a 44G.net and the project and the XAMPP. And into the position here, you can see that is actually the jam and here you have to go to the files. And into the files they have all that versions like for the Mac version, that is for the Linux version, that is for the Windows version. So right now I am using the Windows so for the reasons I am select this one. And here you get all that your PHP versions like there is a 7.3.9, that is a 7.2.2, that is 7.3.8 and also there another one is a 7.3.7. So here you can see that is all that file. So if you like select as a 7.3.7 because in our Laravel it should be required as a 7.2.0. Okay, so right now, so that is actually okay. So that is a 7.3.7 and here you get all the file like that is one of the zip file. So here that is a 64-bit zip file 7.3.7. So first of all, you have to do, you have to download it. If you click on here, it's automatically will be downloaded in your computer. I already download this file if you go to your exercise folder so this is the exercise folder I will share that things with you you will get that file okay so now you can see that is a XAM for the 7.3.7 .7. I already download that file so that is a XAM and 7.3.7 .7. so first of all you have to do you have to uh, click on the right button and here one of the option for the extract here so first of all you have to extract it and when you extract then you get this type of one of the folder and you can see that is actually the XAM folder. So all that file is included on particular that position. So now we have to do, we have to update three files. One of the Apache folder and there is a PHP and the PHP my admin. So these three folder we have to update in our local host. So when you install that XAM, you will get one of the folder in your C drive. Like if you go to that your C drive where actually you install that XAM. So here I install my XAM in our C drive. 
and here you can see when you install it you get this type of one of the folder as a jam and now you have to open it and into these positions like here you have to update this apache and that is actually php and the php my admin so that's all for our old version like here i already discussed about that things with you here now i am using the php version 5.4 so now i want to update it so if you want to update then you have to actually update these three files so right now i better i just make as a rename or rather then you can also delete that things from here so i just define as a apache old for before doing this you have to do you have to stop your apache okay like here i just stop this apache and also stop that mysql so now here i just define as a apache old and also i have to update this one there is a php so i just define as a old and also for this one i just define as a php my admin as a old okay so here i just define that as a old i just rename it rather right? than you can also delete that things from here and now we have to do we have to update this three folder like i already download one of the file that is actually 7.3.7 .7 for the xamp so now there is a apache php and the my php admin so now i have to do i have to copy three of this folder and now go to our local host into the xamp area and now simply i just paste folder on particular that position so it may take little time so when it should be done then i will come back again our three folder is paste successfully in our xam folder like there is our apache folder there is a php folder and the php my admin now we have to do we have to open our php folder and into the php folder they have one of the file as a uh, this one uh, that is actually the php.in so now i open it with the sublink text editor and into this position you have to do you have to update one of the path like if you click on the search and here i just define as xamp and you can see that is one of the path that's the path you have to update like here if you go to the local host like that is actually the c okay so for now i just copy it and now here into this position you have to update that path there is a c and the xamp and then the php so now let's find out another one so this one also i have to update it and now another one so here i also want to update that all path so that is another one okay so i just update that path and that is also another one i just update it and also i want to update this one let's find out another one so this one i also have to update and also there is another one i update it and now click on the find so every path is now updated successfully so that's the things you have to do like now i just click on the save all and now you have to do you have to run your apache and the mysql so now i just click on the start for the apache and also there is a mysql so now if you go to your local host like here there is our local host i'm just refreshing that page and now if you go to the php info yes now you can see that is a php version 7.3.7 .7. so now we successfully updated our local host php version i hope you can well understand about it how we can do that work and also there is a php by admin so that means all the database related issues will be in particular that position like if you go to the php by admin yes it's also perfectly working on here I hope you can well understand about it how can update your local host php version so that's the file i will share that file with you so you get that things from to this position that is the exercise file folder so this form this folder you have to update three of the folder that is the apache and that is actually the php and the php my admin i hope you can well understand about it how can update your local host php version in our next video i will discuss about that laravel how can install that laravel latest version and the six is recently released okay so how can you install that laravel in your local host in our next video i will show you that things with the live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our previous video i already discussed about that things with you how can update your local host php versions right now i am using the php version 7.3.7 .7. So in this video i will show you how can install that laravel so that is the first requirement so i already solved that requirement now i want to install it so you can install that laravel with using the composer 
it should be very much easy so how we can do that work step by step i will show you that things with the live example for doing this first of all you have to do you have to create one of the project folder like here if you go to our XAMPP, so that is our XAMPP when you install that XAMPP as i told you then you will get one of the folder in your c drive so right now i'm install that XAMPP in our c drive for now if you go to that XAMPP and here there is also one of the folder as a st docs so now open it and st docs is the main root directory of your local host and into the local host first of all i want to create one of the folder like here i just name it as a l that means for the laravel core functionalities so i just define as a code okay i just define as a code that means the create read and the update and the delay so for education purpose i'm using this one i just create one of the folder as a code and into the code folder here i want to install that laravel so for doing this first of all here you have to define as a cmd so i just define as a cmd on that part now you can see it's now showing as a xamp and the st docs and that is our folder name so into this folder area i want to install that laravel so before you install that laravel i want to install that composer so if you want to install that composer you have to go here like right now we don't need this so here i just define as a get composer and into the gate composer here you have to go to the downloads and into the downloads here you can see there is also one of the command line installation so right now i just want to install it with the command line so here i just copy it and in our directory so that means here i just simply paste that things on particular that position so it should be created one of the file on particular that area here you can see it's created one of the far file and after that creating here you can see and after that composer install here there is also one of the link as a unlink composer setup.php that means this composer setup.php we don't need this i just want to make that things as a unlink so if you click on the enter then it should be gone from here so here i successfully install that composer and right now i want to install that laravel to make that sure you are connected with the internet so all the file actually he downloaded that things from the internet so now i want to install that laravel like if you go to that laravel official website and here i want to install it via the composer so i already installed that composer right now i want to create one of the project with this one like that is also one of the common line so now i just copy it okay and now in particular that position i paste it so whatever the project folder you want to create you can you, you can put that name on particular that position so like by default that was the blog so right now i want to name it as a l block okay i just define name it as a l block so he'll be created one of the folder and it should be download all the requirement file from the internet as i told you make that sure you are connected with the internet so now here i just put our project name as a l block so now click on the enter so all the necessary file it should be downloaded on particular that position and it may take little time for download all that file okay so make that sure you are connected with the internet you'll be created one of the folder as a l block so that i define for our project name so it may take little time and make that sure you are connected with the internet so when it will be done then i will come back again here you can see it's already downloading all the tcurban file with one by one so as i told you it may take little time and also make that sure you are connected with the internet so it's now on processing so when it will be done then i will come back again okay so now here our laravel 6 is successfully installed in your local host and now if you want to access this folder then you have to go to that a uh, local host that means that as i told you stdocs is the main local host here you can see that is a main local host and after that local host you have to go to the i code okay and then you have to go to this block that means the l block so here first of all i just define as a l code so here there is a local host after that local host that is l code and then i just created our project name as the l block now click on the enter and now here you can see it's now redacted all that resources file like if you go over that folder so that is our all that file is now visible on particular that position so that is the by default then you have to go to the public and into the public here you can see it's now showing our laravel installed successfully so here i installed our laravel and here i installed the laravel 6 version so that is the latest versions right now that is actually running okay 
so now it's perfectly installed in our local host so here this link is a little bit longer so if you want to reduce it like here you have to go into that work like here that is a server.php so i just copied and here i just paste it and now uh, first of all here i just define as the index okay i just rename it as the index.php and now go to the public and here one of the file is the stxs for now i just copy it and now here i just paste on particular that position okay i just paste it so now you don't need to access that public so now i just remove it and now click on the enter yes now you see now you can actually access your project with this url so that is our folder there is another our project folder as a l block so we'll create our code application on particular that position okay so step by step each and everything will be very much clear to you so here we successfully install it and now if you go here like that is our project so now I, now i want to do i want to add that folder in our sublink text editor for this project i will using that editor okay that means the sublink text editor like here i just click on the new window and now in our new window like that is the, our folder so it's pretty much easy the drag and drop so i just select it and i just paste on particular that position and here you can see all that file and all that folder you can now access from to this area so in our next video i will discuss about that overview of our laravel structure how all the file structure is organized in laravel so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in this video, I will discuss about Laravel default file structure. The application structure in Laravel is basically the structure of folders, subfolders, and file includes in a project. Once we create a project in Laravel, we get an overview of the application structure as shown in here. Here refers to the root folder of Laravel, namely Laravel project. It includes various subfolders and file. First of all, app. It is the application folder and includes the enter source code of the project. It contains console, exceptions, and middleware declaration, controller, providers, and model. That is the default Laravel model. Console includes the artisan commands necessary for Laravel, where all the commands are declared with the appropriate signature. Then exceptions. This folder contains all that method needed to handle exceptions. It also contains the file handle.php that handles all that exceptions. Then HTTP. The HTTP folder has subfolder for controller, middleware, and application request. That's the Laravel default controller. As Laravel flow as a MVC design pattern, this folder includes model, controllers, and views defined for the specific directories. The middleware subfolders include the middleware mechanism comprising the filter mechanism and communication between response and request. Then providers. This folder includes all the service providers request to the register event for the core several and the configure a Laravel application. Then the bootstrap. This folder enclosed all the application bootstrap script. It contains a subfolder namely cache which includes all type of associate for the caching a web application. You can also find the file app.php, which initializes the script necessary for bootstrap. Then config. The config folder includes various configuration and associated parameters required for the small functions of the Laravel application. Then database. As the name suggests, this directory includes various parameters for database functionalities. It includes three subdirectories as seeds, migration, and the factories. Seeds, these contain the classes used for unit testing database. Migrations, this folder helps in query for migrating the database used in the web application. And factories, this folder is used to generate large number of data records. I will show you how all things work in Laravel. So everything will be very much clear to you. Then the public. It is the root folder which help in initialize the Laravel application. Then resources directory contains the file which enhance your web application. Here you will get the views folder. Views are the HTML file or template which interact with the end user and play a primary role in MVC architecture. Then the route. Route is the way of creating a request URL of your application. 
you will do lot of work in this route. And then the vendor. Laravel is completely based on composer dependency. For example, to install Laravel setup or to include the third party libraries, etc. The vendor folder includes all that composer dependency. In addition to the above mentioned files, Laravel also includes some of the other files which play a primary role in various functionalities such as the GitHub configuration, packages, and third party libraries. Hope now you have little idea about Laravel file structure. So step by step, I will show you each and everything with live example. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In our previous video, I already discussed about Laravel file structure. Now I want to work on it. So step by step, each and everything will be very much clear to you. So into this session, first of all, I want to do, I want to create one of the code application with using the Laravel. That means how can create data, how can read data from the database, how can update data, and how can delete data from the database. That means how can create the code application with using the Laravel step by step. I will show you that things with the live example. For doing this here, I already installed our Laravel and that is the Laravel by default one of the template that is a blade template. So right now I want to do, I want to make the things little bit interactive. For code functionalities, I don't want to use any template for this one. I want to create uh, that template with using that material design bootstrap. So with the material design, you can actually create one of the page. So I will show you step by step, each and everything will be very much clear to you. Like if you go to the Google and here if you search with the map material bootstrap CDN, then you will get a lot of the resources. So with this CDN, you can actually create one of the page layout very easily. So I will show you how much easily you can do that work. Then it will be very much clear to you. Like there is also one of the site as a mdbootstrap.com. And into this side, you will get all that material design bootstrap file on particular data positions. Like if you go to here and now there is also one of the option as a download, like click on the download. And here there is an option for the direct download. And here if you click on the direct download, then you will get one of the zip file. So I already downloaded it. Like if in your exercise file, I will sh share that file with you. That is a MDB file. And here you can see that is actually the MDB file at 48 at zip. So that is the zip file. When you click on here, there is a direct download. Then you will get this type of one of the folders that is our ex in our exercise file. I already share it. So now, first of all, you have to do there is a zip file. You have to extract it like here. I extract it and into these positions here. You can see there is all that CSS. You get that things from here. There is a bootstrap mean. There is a bootstrap. There is a MDB CSS and all the required things like there is a font, the images and also all the JSS file. That means the bootstrap mean JSS. Okay. So with using this material bootstrap, then how much easily you can create one of the, you can design one of the page. I will show you, then it's very much interactive. And also they have all the things like here, you can see that is if you want to add some of the navigation, you get that code from here. If you want to add some of the tables, if you want to add the forms, I will show you, then it should be very much clear to you. So first of all, here you have to stack it. And here that is our index.html. So now I want to open it like here. I just open it with the sublink text editor. So here that is all that file. So that is all that CSS file is linked on here. That is also that is a JS file. So now I want to update our default template. So when you install that Laravel, that is our default template. And into the default template, what exactly the things happening? Like here, when you actually access that route, that means the home route. So if you go our that positions, like that is our route. And into the route, there is a web.php. And into the web.php, there is actually the URL, one of the parameters. So here, it means actually the home. Okay. And when you access that URL, that means the home URL, its function returned you to the view and the welcome page. That means if you go to the resources, and here you can see there is one of the folder as a views, and into the views, that is a welcome. And blade.php is the Laravel default template engine name. Okay. So now you can see that space name is the welcome. So it's still redacted to you that page. That means this will welcome page. So now for the code application, I want to create some of the file and folder and then I will segment it. Okay, I will show you All right now. That is a view. Okay, like in our view, I just create one of the folder and I just name it as a layout. Okay, I just name it as a layout. 
and into the layouts here I want to create one of the file like here I just click as a save as and I want to create one of the file as a main dot blade dot php so I just name it and I also want to create another one like here I want to create another file name uh, I just make the things as a save as okay I just click on the save as and I just name it as a footer dot blade dot php okay and also I want to create another page like here I want to create another page and click on the save as and I just name it as a neighbor dot blade dot php okay so here I created three of these file one is the main one is the neighbor and another is the footer okay so that is actually the three part and if the main blade that means here so in particular that position I want to do in our bootstrap that means in our bootstrap here I open one of the file that is the index.html so now I just copy whole things from here okay I just copy whole things from here and in our main blade here I paste it and now here that is all that link there is a JS link and also they have some of the CSS link so we have to update it so right now that is index HTML we don't need this I just remove that things from here so first of all here I want to update that path so for doing this in Laravel if you want to access it you have to define that with the double second bracket and here you have to define as an asset okay asset and into the asset means actually the root directory okay like if you go our drive like here there is a our L block so asset means it should be started from to this position that means this directory in your project directory I just assign that in Laravel as an asset and after that asset here in our that folder that is all that folder the CSS font and then the images JS and this one so all that folder I just copy from here and in our project in our public in our public here I just want to create one of the folder as a, a test okay I just define as a test and here I just paste all the folder particular that position and now I want to do I want to link that page so that is in our project that which I assign that things with the asset and after that asset then the public and then the test so here you have to assign it so I just define that asset and after that asset here you have to define your public that means the public folder so I just define as a public folder and after that public folder I created one of the folder as a test so I just define as a test and after the test here you can see that is actually CSS folder and the bootstrap CSS right like if you go to that page like there is a public and after that public there is a test folder and into the test folder there is a CSS and after the CSS here you can see there is a bootstrap.css so that will be our file link so for now I just copy it okay I just start it and I just paste on particular that position I hope you can well understand about it asset means that our project root directory and after the project root directory I just define our things like that is our asset that means our project root directory and after that there is a public and after public there is a test and then the CSS and all that CSS file link and also we have to do the same things for with our JS like that is our all the JSS file so now first of all I have to update it okay so better I just copy it and I also have to update this one also update this one that is a CSS I just start it and there is a CSS style okay so first of all you have to add all the file link so I just start it and I just paste it on here and also um, they have some of the JSS so for the JS we have to also do the same things better I just copy it and here I just paste it so after that test then the JS folder like if you go to this place like here you can see after the test then the JS folder and all the JSS file so for right now I want to add that file like the, the JSS I just cut it and after the test so here I just paste it so I just copy it and here I just paste Okay, so for now I just updated that JS all that file. I cut it and here I just update it. Also, there is another JS, so I just cut it and here I just paste it. And there is also another JS as a MDB. 
means so i just got it and here after the chase i just added so here i updated our path that means all the js file path i updated and here that is our all that css i just updated on particular that position so i hope you can well understand about it and now that is the part so that is the our project part so right now i remove all the things from here okay and in particular that position i just want to make that page segment like here i want to include our footer i want to include our neighbor on particular that position so how can segment that page i will continue this process and in our next video i will show you that things with a live example so if you know that basic structure then laravel will be very much fun for you so stay tuned with me i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our previous video i already discussed about that things with you how can add that bootstrap material design and also i created one of the file as a main blade.php footer blade.php and the neighbor blade.php and also i updated path for the all the css and also for the jss so i hope you can well understand about it how can update your that path and in this video i want to segment all that page like here if you access that page like that is our laravel by default one of the page so this page is actually comes from our views and that is a welcome blade so that the welcome blade is now visible by default on particular that position so now i want to update it like here if you select all and if you remove all the things from here and now if you click on the save all and now if you click on the refresh now you can see it's now become blank so how can segment all the page so that is the main core things that you should know okay like that is our blade.php and in our blade.php here i want to do i want to add our this main blade on particular that position okay because here i want to segment it like first doing this first of all here you have to write down as the extends and here i just define extend and extend which file i want to load that file that means the main blade so in our main blade there is a layouts folder and after that layout that is the main so now we have to write down that things on here as a layout dot and then main so i just define our main file on here okay and also after that i want to do i want to add one of the section like here i just define as a section and here i into the section i define one of the uh, id as a contain okay i just define one of the id as a contain and i have to do i have to and it so i just and that section so i just define that and section on here and for better understand here i just take one of the h1 tag and here i just defining it as a home page okay like here i just define as a home home page so i just define one of the h1 tag on particular that position and now here i just extend all layout main dot blade so now in particular that position i also want to include it our neighbor and also the footer like here in particular that area i include it like as a add the rate include okay i just define include and also here you have to define that url path like here i have to define that layout okay into the layouts here i created that file as a neighbor okay i just define as a neighbor on particular that position and also i want to include our another one so that is on the footer so here i just defining it uh, like as a include and then i also want to lay added that in our layout folder and then our footer okay i just loaded our footer so our neighbor and the footer will be the same for our every pages but i only want to make one of the part as a dynamic like that is actually contained so for the reasons here i just define one of the part as a contained so this content part will be the dynamic because if you go to create the about us page into the about us page the, our header part will be the same that means the neighbor will be the same and the footer will be the same only in our inside that content will be changed so for that if you want to make the things dynamic so i want to add one of the another things like here which part will be the dynamic you have to defining it on here so if you want to do that work you have to define as yield okay so yield part will be the dynamic and here i just define one of the ideas a contain so right now i have to do i have to define that part as a contain 
So only this contain part will be dynamic for the reasons I just define as a white and include I just include the our neighbor so neighbor will be the same for the every pages and footer also will be the same for the every pages. So I will show you then it should be very much clear to you. Like here I already included our neighbor and the footer. So that is our footer page and the neighbor. So right now I want to add some of the script from our MD5 here. Like here there is MD bootstrap and if you go here and here if you find out one of the neighbor from here like if you go to that contain uh, not into the contain there is a component into the component here actually the navigation and into the navigation here you can see there is actually the neighbor so now i just select as a neighbor and here you can see there is actually the neighbor all that uh, design pattern on here so now i want to do so like that is actually one of the name but it's automatically ready made all the things so right now i just copy that code okay so i just copy whole code from here i just copy it and now in our neighbor i paste it okay so that's all the demo data and also there are another one like i just also want to take the footer part like there is a footer so footer will be just like that it's automatically ready made all the code okay so for now i just copy it and now in our footer part i paste it okay literally i will customize it i will show you so now i just added some of the footer on particular that board on particular that position and also i added the nav bar on particular that position and that is our main blade and in our main blade i included our nav bar part our layout part and into the central position that is a content and contain will be the dynamic for the reasons I just make the things as a yield and in our home page here I just defining that layout okay and here into this position I just segment one of the contain and here there is our h1 tag so now let's check this out if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like here I just refresh it yes now you can see now that is our neighbor part and that is our footer part and that is our el part that is the content id here i just defining it on here so for the every pages our neighbor will be the same footer will be the same and here you can see i just defining it when you access that welcome plate and here i just extend that page that means the layout main so for right now that is the page is loaded and into this page i just included the our layout neighbor so for the reasons here you can see there is a layout our neighbor is added on here and also i add include the footer part so footer part is also loaded on particular that position and here i just define one of the page content id so there's our el part that means this will be the dynamic for the every pages and for the every pages this part will be the change okay so now here I just define one of the H1 tag we dig into this section and here that is actually the visible on particular that position. I hope you can well understand about it how much easily you can design one of the page with using the bootstrap material design. Okay. So now I want to do I want to actually customize it right now I don't need all that things. Okay. So now that is our neighbor. So if you now go to that neighbor and in our neighbor here there is all the features. So right now I want to actually I don't need that drop down. So here there is actually the drop down. So I just minimize it and I just remove it from here. And also they have one of the search like here there is a search. So I also don't need this. Uh, that is actually the form. So I just remove that things from here. And that is I only want to take one of the one field like here I just take one of the field as a add new. Okay, so here I just want to add new and now I also don't need this. So for now, if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that page, yeah, now you can see everything is gone. There is a home and there is another button as a add new. Perfect. So from to this position, I just want to create one of the page. So I will do that things later. And now here I just define the easy learning. Okay, I just define as the easy learning and now if you click on the save all and if you now refresh it yeah perfect now you can see there is an easy learning there is a home page and there is another page as the add new and for the footer right now we don't need that type of things okay I want to actually minimize it so go to the footer blade and into the footer blade 
so that's all that part we don't need this okay like that is actually the one of the tape so i just select that tape and now i just remove that tape and here uh, there's some of the link i just remove it and here i just put my side okay so easy learning beauty.com and here i just define as easy learning So here I just define as the easy learning. I just put as a 19. So I customize our footer part. Now let's check this out. I just click on the save all. And now I just refresh it. Yeah, perfect. Now we see that is our nav bar part. That is our footer part. So better I just put some of the hairy like bracket like here. That is our in particular that position. That is this section. Right now I just put some of the break. Okay. So here I just put some of the break and now click on the save all, refresh it, yeah perfect. So as I told you this nav bar will be the static for the every pages. So the footer will be the static for the every pages. Only this part will be the change. Like when you create the create page then it should be very much clear to you. So our nav bar and footer will be the same and only the content part will be the updated. So I hope it's very much clear to you how much easily with using that bootstrap material design you can create it and that is actually empty bootstrap you as I told you you get all the materials from to this position so if you want to use any component from here you can use it so right now I'm using the footer part and also the neighbor and now it's now perfectly visible on here so in our next video I will show you how you can create the database and how you can configure it so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In your previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how can design your page with using the bootstrap material design and now it's perfectly visible on here. In this video, I will show you how you can create the database and how you can configure it into the Laravel. For doing this, first of all, here you have to do, you have to go to the local host. So here there is our my local host. Right now I am using the XAMPP. And here make that sure you are started your Apache and the MySQL and now go to the PHP admin and into the PHP admin that is our database for now I just select as a database and into the database that have option for the create database right now I want to create one of the database as a L code and now there is an option for the create now I just click on the create and now here you can see our database is created successfully so now our database name is l code so now i want to do i want to configure it so for configure it you have to go to your this position that means in your root directory and here there is also one of the file as if now you have to open it and in particular that position here you can see that is actually the database and that you have to put your database username and the password so right now I created one of the database as a L code. So I just paste on particular that position. And now I am using the local host. But in our local host, our username is the root. That is actually the by default. And password, they have no password. So you get all that information. Like if you go to your main database area. And now there is an account. That means the user account. And into the user account here, you can see there is a username by default. That is actually the root host name as the local host. And password right now we I don't have any password for the reasons I just make the things as a blank so that is actually the blank and the username I just define as a root and that is our database but now if you click on the save all and now I just want to refresh that page so if everything okay it should be work you can see it's perfectly they have no error so it's perfectly configured it so how much easily you can configure it in Laravel I hope you can well understand about it but if you want to do that work with using the PHP, then you have to write down a lot of the code for this one. I hope you can well understand about it. In our next video, I will discuss about that route. How you can create the route and how the route actually work in the Laravel. Each and everything will be very much clear to you. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In this video, I will discuss about Laravel route. Routing is one of the essential concept in Laravel. It's a way of creating a request URL of your application. Routing in Laravel allow you to route all your application requests to its appropriate controller. In Laravel, route offers some of the route methods. In route, there have the six type of methods like get method, post method, put method, 
delete method, patch method, and the options method. When you want to fast some of the content, then you have to use get method. When you want to insert some of the data into the database, then you have to use post method. When you want to update some data into the database, then you have to use put method. When you want to update one single field in the database, then you have to use patch method. When you want to delete data, then you can use delete method. Step by step, I will show you all that method with live example. Now let's get started with the code. Finding out the route, you have to go to your directory and there is a routes folder and into the routes folder, they have the web.php. Now open it and in Laravel route, it gets two parameter. One is the URL and another one is the callback. For now here, this is the URL and this function is the callback. And here this URL actually indicating the home, like when you actually access that folder, that means the our root directory, that is the L block, then it should be redacted to our home page and into the position I just returned that one of the view as a welcome page. I already discussed about that things with you. That is our views folder and in the views folder that is a welcome blade.php. So first of all here it's load that page. So here you can see that is a home page and for now that is the home page is now visible on here. So that's the URL here. I just defining it as a home and then that is actually our callback. In our callback area I just load our that page. Okay, so which page you want to actually access and for now I want to do I want to create one of the route Then it should be very much clear to you like here. I want to create one of the route as a hello Okay, I just defining as a hello and in function that means here and now I just want to return some of the text like here I just return some of the text as a hello world and now if you save it like here I just click on the save all now I want to access this route so that means that is actually our home route and after that home I just added one of the text as a hello okay that means that is actually one of the parameters so for now I just copy it and now that is our home and after that I just want to access as a hello and now if you click on the enter now you can see it's now showing that message that means the hello world so here I only fetch that data for the reasons I am using the get method and now here if you want to create one of the dynamic route you can also do that work like here uh, for education purposes pretty much basic things i just sharing with you okay so it should be very much helpful to you like here i want to create, make the things dynamic like here i just defining as a user and now here i want to add another parameter on particular that position so if you want to add another parameter on here then you have to add it the second bracket and into the second bracket here you have to defining the id so whatever the things you want to add you can actually add the things on here for right now i am defining as the id so now we have to do we have to actually pass that id in our this function area so for now here i just defining as a one of the variable as the id and now i want to show it so here like i just defining as a your okay your id is and after that i want to concrete it so here after that i just want to concrete and then i just want to concrete with this id so here i just simply added that id and now if you click on the save all and now if you access this user and also they have some of the id like here i access it as a user and after that user here i just defining one of the id like here i just defining as a five and if you click on the enter yes now you can see it's now showing as your id is the five so here i just assign all the parameter as a five okay so whatever the things you put on particular that position like here i just defining as the aryan and if you click on the enter now you see it's now showing as your id is aryan so that is the things you can do and i also make the things dynamic for the reasons in our function area first of all i take this id and then i just can create that id on particular that position here i returned it okay so i hope you can well understand about it so by default that is our root and for now i only want to fast some of the data for the reasons i just using the get method so literally i will also show you how you can use the post method for inserting the data into the database how you can when you update your data then you have to use the put method and also if you want to delete it then you have to use the delete method so all that method is step by step i will show you with the live example and also they have the another things 
like here in our callback area i just loaded our welcome page right so here that is our welcome page is this one so here i returning that view you can do the same things with using one of the controller like here then you have to do it for now i just delete it in our route if you want to do that work then you have to define one of the controller name for education purpose i'm defining and here as a uh, controller controller name so here should be some of the controller name then you have to add it the add the rate and here you have to assign some of the method okay so into this controller you have to actually create this method so how can create the controller and how can create the method and how can load that page that means this web page in our next video i will show you that things with the live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in your previous video i already discussed about laravel route in this video i will discuss about the controller what is controller and how can create the controller first of all what is the controller in mvc pattern rule there have no such direct path in model to view or view to model for that reason they need one intermediate media and this intermediate media is controller so now let's get started with the code for finding out the controller, you have to go to the app and into the app that is HTTP and into the HTTP, you can see there is a controller. So when we install that Laravel, we get by default one of the controllers. So that is a controller.php and that is a auth. So right now I want to do, I want to create new another new controller. So right now we don't need this, I remove it. We also don't need this, I remove it. Okay. So right now I want to create another controller for creating the controller. You have to go to that directory. So that is our, our main directory. In particular that position I just define as a CMD and into the CMD you have to write down as a PHP artisan then make and controller and then you have to define your controller name for educational purpose here I am creating one of the controller name as a student controller I am defining as a student controller now if you click on the enter and now here you can see it's now showing as a controller created successfully so now if you go to our directory that means here that is http that is a controller and in the controller here you can see there is a student controller is now created now into this controller here first of all there is a name space a name space is one of the virtual directory and there is a use the request so that is actually one of the class if you want to you access some of the class then you have to use it so here with the eliminate and the http and that's a request so that is actually one of the by default class is using on particular that position and then our controller name that is our student controller that i created and it's extended with the laravel default controller as a controller in our previous video i already created one of the route like here you can see there is a gate route and now that is our home route now I want to load our welcome page that means in our view so that is our welcome page I want to load it so here you have to defining as a your controller name so right now I already created one of the controller as a this one for now I just copy it and now here I just define that our controller name on particular that position and into this controller I have to do I have to create one of the method so now I want to create one of the method as index method so here I just defining as the index now this method I have to create in our student controller that means here so in particular that position I want to create one of the method as a public and then function and here I is defining the index method so here that is our index method and in particular that position I want to return that view so here I is defining as a return okay return and then view our view URL I have to assign it so our page is in our view and that is a welcome page so right now i want to defining that things on here so that is a welcome so i just defining as a welcome page on particular that position and now if you uh, click on the save all like here i just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like here now i want to access our home directory and now click on the enter yes now you can see it's perfectly loaded successfully so how the things exactly work like here in our web route here that is for the home route in, in our home route I created one of the controller and I created one of the method and in our home controller I created that method as an index method so into this index method I just simply return that page okay so for the reasons it's now automatically loaded 
when you access the home route that means the home url so in laravel you can create controller with two different way i already discussed about one things that is the one of the method of the php addition make controller and the student controller and also if you want to create some of the resourceful controller you can also do that work for doing this you have to do you have to write down as a php artisan and then make and i just defining as a controller and now i want to create one of the um, test controller now here i just defining one of the test controller and now i want to do i want to create one of the resourceful controller for doing this you have to do you have to put the space then double line and here you have to define the resource okay i just defined the resource and now if you click on the enter now you can see it's now created the controller created successfully and now if you go to our controller area now you can see that is actually a test controller and into the test controller here you can see by default all that code method is available on here like that is for the index method is automatically created that is the create method is created so that is the our store method is created if you want to show it if you want to edit that is the edit method is also created on here that is the update method and there is a destroy method so all that method automatically created when you actually create one of the resourceful controller rather than you have to write down every controller as your own like before in our student controller here i created one of the simple controller for the reasons here i created that things okay that means the index method so here is by default automatically ready made all the things like if you want to actually create another route i will show you like here i just copy it and now i want to create another one like here i just defining as a test and now i want to access one of the other controller like that is a test controller so for now i just copy it and in particular that position i just defining as a test controller and you know test controller now i want to access the index method so now i want to do like here in our index method that means here that is our test controller index method in particular that position first of all i want to display some of the message like here i just defining as echo I just defining as echo and here I just defining as this is just for test face so this type of one of the text I want to visible like if you could now click on the save all and now if you want to access this route that means this one so now let's check this out what exactly happened like here there is our home and after that I just defining as a test and if you click on the enter yes now you see it's now redacted to our this message that means this is the just for the test page so i hope it should be very much clear to you about the route and the controller so that is our route and here i just defining one of the controller name in our controller here i just defining on the index method and into the index method here i just defining one of the echo so i hope you can well understand about it how you can create two different type of controllers so that is the resourceful controller and that is our simple controller so you can do that work with using that command line so that is a php artisan and that is simple and that is for the resources in our next video i will discuss about the model how can create the model and how can migrate it in our next video i will show you that things with the live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our previous video i already discussed about that things with you what is controller and how can create the controller in this video, I will discuss about how you can create the model and how you can migrate it. When you install that Laravel, we get by default one of the model in our app folder that is a user model. And here this user model is used for by default Laravel logging authentication. So that is a by default one of the model. And if you go to the database and here there is a migration. And here you can see there is actually all that by default that is a create password that is a one of the migration as a create user table and that is a create fail job so that's all that by default when you install that laravel you get two of these things that is a migrations and that is the user and right now first of all i want to do i want to create one of the model and also i want to migrate it for doing this first of all you have to go to your command line and now that is our path that means our st docs and that is our main block so that means this route okay so first of all here you have to go on particular that position and now into this position i want to create one of the model like here if you want to write a model then you have to write down as a php artisan and make and then model okay i just defining as a model 
and now I want to create one of the model as a student model so here I just define as the student okay I just defining as the students model and also I want to migrate it so here you have to define as a line and then I just define as a M so now if you click on the enter he will be create two things one is the model as a student model so this the model will be saved on particular that position and also I defining as a M that means the migration so it should be also created another file into the migration area now let's check this out i just click on the enter now here you can see it's now creating the model created successfully so here that is our model as a student's model and also i created another migration so that is our migration file is loaded on here you can see there is a create student table. i hope you can well understand about it so now if you open it like that is the by default one of the things like that is one of the table as a id and there is a table so I already created one of the database like here if you go to that position so I already created one of the database right now I want to create some of the table so how much easily you can do that work in Laravel I will show you step by step each and everything I hope will be very much clear to you so right now for this project I like I want to create one of the code application and for this code I want to create one of the table as a student's table and here I also want to assign some of the field like in particular that position better I just copy it and here I want to take some of the field okay like here better I just put as the same line and here there is a table and first of all I just define one of the field as a fast name so I just defining as a fast underscore name and now here this field I just put that things as a string that means the character okay and also better I just copy it and now I want to take another one and here I just name it as a last name and now I also want to take another field for the email or the phone so I just define two of these for the email and also I want to take another one for the phone okay I just defining as a phone so this phone will be the strain so email I just also put the things as a strain that means all the character okay and that is actually by default the time spent so it should be automatically created one of the date format when this actually created so now it's perfect here I just defining one of the table as a student table and into the student table I want to create some of the field like there is our first name field there is a last name field there is an email field and the phone so I hope you can well understand about it and now I want to do I want to migrate it okay so if you migrate it then it's automatically created one of the table on particular that position let's check this out I just click on the save all and now go to your command line and here you have to write down as a PHP artisan and migrate MIC R A T migrate is perfect and now here I click on the enter so here it's showing some of the error like here there is a pretty much common error okay you can see there is a syntax error access valid as a specific key too long so it's very much common error like yeah, if you copy it and now if you uh, go to the data uh, google and here if you search it like here you can see there is uh, <laughs> there is common so here you get some of the resources like there is actually one of the resources in github like open it and here here you can see there are some of the instructions like you have to go to the app providers and the app service providers so you have to actually update some of the things like here if you go to your page like here there is an app that means here there is an app and then you have to go to the providers and there is an app service providers okay so here you can see you have to go on particular that page area first and into these positions like if you open it and here you can see there is a service provider is added so you have to also add use another class like here uh, this one so I just copy it and now I just added that class on particular that position and also you have to update one things like there is you know boot method here you have to assign that one so I just copy it and here there is a register there is a boot in our boot method you have to add that things okay so that's all you have to do like here um, the register application uh, so that's all I think it should be worked because uh, before I already faced this type of problem so now let's check this out I just click on the save all 
and when you actually migrate like here i already migrated okay so some of the by default one of the table automatically created the field like if you go to the our database like here if you now click on the structure now you can see by default this migration about the user table as i told you when you install that laravel we get by default one of the model as a user so right now it's automatically added so right now i just select two of these and now first of all i just put that things as a drop it click on the enter okay so now i want to do that work again so first of all i just click on the save all and now i want to migrate it again like here i just define as a php artisan and then migrate and now if you click on the enter yes now you can see is migration table created successfully so all the table is now perfectly now created and now if you go to the database and now if you click on the refresh yes you can see that is our users table so that's all actually by default one of the table so right now we don't need this i created this table as a student and into the student table i already created some of the field and here you can see there is a first name there is a last name field there is email and there is a phone so that's all i actually created in particular that position okay i hope you can well understand about it so we created one of the models so that is actually our student model and also i created one of the migrated and into the migrate here whatever the field you want to add then you can add that things on particular that position and after that i did i just put that things as a migrate so now it's perfectly migrated and create the database table as a student and with all that our field so now i want to do i want to insert some of the data like i want to insert the first name the last name email phone from our home page like if you go to that our home page and here i already created one of the add button that means the add new so into the add new area i want to create another page as a create page and from the create page i want to insert all the data so how can do that work step by step i will show you that things with a live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video i already discussed about that things with you how you can create the model and how you can migrate it and I also created one of the table as a students and also I assigned some of the field like if you go to the word database so I created one of the table as a students and here all that our field. So right now I want to do I want to create one of the create page and from to the create page I want to insert all the data like first name, last name, email and phone. So for doing this first of all we have to do we have to create one of the page that means the create page like here right now we don't need this i just remove it and that is our app service provider so we also don't need this there is a test controller right now i remove it okay so that is main there is a welcome so now first of all i want to create one of the route for this create like here um, better i just copy it okay so that's all our education purpose i'm using it and now here i just paste it and particular that position i want to create one of the route as a create Okay, I just defining as a create and now in our student controller now I want to create one of the method as a create method okay I just defining as a create method and also here better I want to assign some of the name for these two like here uh, I just define that name on here I just define that name uh, for this one as a home okay I just define that name as a home and for this one I just define that name I just define it for this one as a create so here I just define as a create and now that is I define as a home so now we have to do we have to work in our student controller and we have to create this method as a create method so now go to the student controller here so now I want to create another method like here I just define as a public and then function and then our method name create so here I just define that create method in particular that position I also want to load another page like before I load that welcome page right now I want to actually create another page for the create and for that I want to load it like here I just define that return return and the view in our view folder I have to create one of the page as a create okay I just define that create on particular that position so now that's all you have to do so now we have to do we have to create this 
page that means the create page in our view area that means in our view so here i just click on the new file click on the save as and i just name it as a create dot blade dot phd okay i hope you can well understand about it and for education purpose here i it should be just like our welcome like better i just copy it okay i just copy it and i just paste on particular that position here i already discussed about that things with you i want to extend that our main class okay and to the main class so that is i define one of the id that means the content id so on particular that position i just define as a create page so i just defining as a create page now let's check this out i just click on the save all so i already created one of the route for this one as a create that means the slash and the create and in our student controller i define that method and into the method here you can see i just defining our page that means in our view folder that is our create page that means this view and that is our create page now if you access it like here i just define slash create and if you click on the enter yes now you can see only this content path is actually changed so the header actually will be the same that our footer will be the same only the create part will be different so now here i want to do i want to add some of the material design bootstrap on here for now i like here i want to add one of the form for this one like now first of all i want to actually design that page okay so right now i remove it so first of all i want to designing it so better i just go to the md5 that means mdbootstrap.com as i told you all the things you get from here like go to here and now i want to add some of the forms like here that is actually the form and now that is actually basic example and in our basic example here you can see there is some of the fields because we need some of the field so that is all that code because uh, here we have some of the field as a first name last name email and phone okay so this one is pretty good better i just take this one like it is a first name last name i just put that things as a email and that is a password so i will change it our phone number is also available on here so it's perfect so for now i just want to take that all code uh, you can see that is all that codes for now I just copy it and in our create page here in particular that position after that better i just paste it so now let's check this out if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like here i just refresh it yes now you see there is a our field the first name field last name field email field there is password so right now we don't need that password only i need the phone number there is the sign in we also don't need this so i just want to customize it as per our demand okay and so if you go to that position that is actually the sign in and after that sign in uh, that is actually sign in after that or sign up so here we don't need this so better i just remove it from here okay i just remove all the things from to this position and that's by clicking i also don't need this i remove it and there is a button that is a two optional uh, let's check this out that is a subscript to the newsletter we also don't need this and that means this level so here i just remove that dave and also there is a optional authentication so there is optional authentication i remove it so that is actually our phone field so this field will be needed okay like i just click on the save all if you now refresh it yeah, you can see all the things is now gone from here and also there is a password field so right now i don't need use that password field so uh, that is actually the password so you can see that is the input field so i remove it also from here perfect now i just click on the save all and if you now refresh it yeah now you can see that is actually the, our first name last name email and phone so I only want to insert all the data from here to in our database field area like that is our database table first name last name email and phone perfect and also here I want to update that name and that is also some of the text on particular that position so if you go here there is actually the sign up okay so I just want to add as a add data add student I just define as a add student and uh, also here i defining as add data 
so here I just defining it click on the save all and now if you refresh it yeah now we see there is a add student there is add data perfect and also actually you can see this is actually totally white that means the full white I also want to add one of the bootstrap class like here uh, on particular that position I want to add one of the bootstrap class I just take one of the tape okay and here I just define one of the class and I just define one of the container one of the class that is one of the class of bootstrap okay I just define as a container class and now I want to do I want to finish that tape and on here so I just finish it now click on the save all and now if you refresh that page yes now you see it's now actually looking pretty good and also in our neighbor I added one of the home and that is also I created another page as a add new For right now I don't put any link on particular that position so that is in our neighbor so I just want to put some of the link like if you go to the layouts and there is a neighbor and in our neighbor here you can say there is a home so for now I want to assign some of the URL like for the home I already created one of the route as a for this one that means this one is for the, our home and then this one is for our create page right so now I want to add two of this like here you have to define the second bracket that means double second bracket and in particular that position I just define the URL okay I just define that URL on particular that area I just define our home directory so here I just define our home and this one is for our create so I just do the same things URL and here I define on particular that position as a slash and after the slash I create one of the route as a create so here I just copy it and after the slash then the create perfect so here I just define two of this link now let's check this out I just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page now if you click on the home it will be redirected to our home page and if you click on the add new yes you can see now it's redirected to our add new page so as I told you for the reasons I just make the things as a segment that our neighbor area that is our footer area only that content area you can see it's only the changing like if you go the home our neighbor is same footer is the same only that content part is become changed for the reasons I just define that things on here okay like if you go to the create and here you can see that I just define on the selection and first of all I just define that layout in our main and in our main which part will be the dynamic so for the reasons I just define as the yield and for the yield here I just define as the content ID for the reasons here you can see I just define that section content ID on here and also in our home page here I also define the section and here I just define that ID for the reasons only this part is become changed like if you go to the add new you can see this part is become become changed so now I want to do I want to insert the data like that is all that our field so here if you put the first name the last name the email address and the phone number and if you click on the add data then all the data will be saved in our database table on particular that position so how can do that work in our next video I will show you that things with the live example so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video I already discussed about that things with you how can create the create page so first of all here I design our create page and now I want to do if you put your first name last name email and phone number and if you click on the add data all the data will be stored in our database table that means on particular that position so how can do that work in this video I will show you that things with a live example so for doing this first of all we have to do we have to create one of the route for this one like if you go to the route area like here I just copy it okay and now I paste it as I told you before when you want to insert some of the data then you have to use that post method so right now I want to insert some of the data for the reasons you have to define as a post method so I just define as a post okay and in, then this URL will be the same in our create and in our student controller now I want to store all the data for the reasons I just define one of the other method as a store okay I just define as a method as a store and this name I just call as a store so here I just defining as a store on particular that position and then we have to do we have to work in our create page that means on here so first of all that's all that our input field like that is our name field that is our last name that is our email and phone so here first of all I just want to put some of the name for this field like here I just define that name 
okay and I just name it as a fast name okay I just define as a fast name and also this one for the last name so here I just define that name and here I just define as a last name and then this one is the email so here I just define that name I just name it as the email and also this one is the phone so I just define that name as a phone okay so here I just define all that first of all all that name and now we have to add some of the action in our form like they have some of the form and into the form they have some of the action so here we have to add some of the actions like when you should be answered the data where exactly it should be rejected I already created one of the route for this one like there is a method as the store method so in your store method I just name it with the store right so now I just put that route so on particular that position so here I just define the route like here the route okay and here I just define the route as name as a store so for the reasons I just define as a store for the reasons actually I am using that name so for now actually I can access that route with this store name so for the reasons I just define that route and store and now I also have to do I have to add the method because here I also already added the method as a post method so we have to also defining it on here like here I just define that method and it should be the post method so here I just defining as a post method I hope you can well understand about it what exactly the things I want to do so that's all we have to do on particular that positions like here when he'll be at that that means submit that data so in our form here I just put some of the action it should be rejected to our store method and here it should be the post so if you go to the route here you can see there is a post method and it should be directed to our store method so now we have to do we have to work in our store method so i have to add that store method in our student controller so now go to our student controller and here i want to create new method like as a public sorry public and then function and here our method name as a store okay i just defined that our store method I hope it's very much clear to you what exactly the things I want to do on particular that position and in our store method first of all you have to do you have to get that request so here I just define that request and also here I just take that things with one of the variable as a request okay I just defining as a request so it's by default I already discussed about that things with you when you actually create one of the resourceful controller like here if you go to that HTTP and here there is a controller I already created one of the resourceful controller and here you can see in our resources controller there is a request and request is automatically ready-made on particular that positions so right now I am actually creating one of the simple controller for the student controller for the reasons I just name it as a request and that is actually the request so now in particular that position first of all I want to validate it like here I just define as a these okay these and here I just define the validation that means the validate yeah, I just define that validate with this request so here I just define that request okay it means first of all I want to do I want to actually validate all the data like if this field is empty then it should be show some of the message if this name last name will be the empty then it should be also show some of the message so first of all I just make that all that field as a required okay so for the reasons I just defined some of the validations so how can create it I will show you like here I just have to define it with the array uh, sorry with the array here I just defining it like here I have to define all that field like first of all here I have to define our first name so I already assigned the name on here that is the color first name so here I just define that first name and first name I just defining it as a required so I just defining as a required and also well, better I just copy it because I want to make all the field as a required so that should be the first name and also there is a last name so I just define that last name field will be the required for email will be the required so here I just define that email and also another field as a phone so I also make the things as a required so all the things will be required and here I just defining add that things with the array and for the array in the last you don't need to add the comma okay so for the reasons I just remove it from here and now after that I want to add our model like here um, I, I just take one of the variable as a student 
okay i just define all the variable and here i just create all of the object for this student model so here i just define that student model on particular that position so if you use that model then you have to also use it so here you have to use it like here i use okay use with now our app folder and then the, our student so here i just define our student model on particular that position i hope you can well understand about it it is our app and here you can see that is one of the student models so that is our student model and now i want to do i want to actually first of all as pass that all the things with this student like here with this student i just define that our first name okay i just define our first name that means our database field name so our database i just defining as a, if you go to the better structure so our field name as a first name so i just copy it and now here with this student i just define our this one as a first name okay and then i defining it with this request that means here with this request i just put that on here so with this request i just defining our field name our field name is i defining as a first name so here i just defining the first name so and i also have to do the same things because here i want to save all the data so here i just defining it so it should be our database field name so our database for the last name i just defining as the last name okay so here i just defining the last name and with this request it should be matched with our field name so that means here i just defining our field name as a last name right i already validate all the things on particular that position so here i just defining that last name and then our database field name as email ID, okay so here there is email and that is also as email and database field as a phone so here with this student i just defined as a phone and here i just passed with the request as a phone perfect and after that i want to do i want to save it so for now with this student variable like here i just define a student so with this student i want to save it so here i just define that save all the data i hope you can well understand about it and after that save data where exactly it should be detected okay it means uh, if you actually insert the first name last name all the data and if you click on the add data and when the data will be the inserted if you want to redirect it to the another page you can also do that work and also i want to display some of the message like all the student data I inserted successfully so this type of also i want to visible some of the message so first of all he will be saved and after that save i want to redact it so here i just define that return return and then redact okay and the redact and here i have to define that route so i want to do like after that save data you should be rejected to our home directory that means here okay so for now i just defining as a home and here i just defining first of all our route Okay, our route and in our route here I want to actually assigning it uh, as a home you can see I just name it as a home because that is will be our main URL that means the home URL and I just name it as a home for now I just defining it on here okay so for the reasons I just define that route as a home route it should be redacted and also I want to do like that is actually uh, we have to finish it so that is one bracket and that is our route bracket perfect and after that if you want to show some of the message i also want to do that things when this data will be inserted then it should be also show with some of the message so for the reasons here i just define one of the laravel function as a width width i also want to show some of the message for the reasons here i just defining one of the variable as a success okay success message so and here i just defining some of the message which message you should be visible like here you should be visible as a student successfully added so i think step by step it should be very much clear to you what exactly the things i did on particular that position so here uh, that's all i just saved that data and after that save here i just return to our home page and with some of the message so which message that means the student successfully added message and here i added some of the successful message so literally i will show you how can show that message with this variable okay so in our home page that means welcome we have to actually visible that message 
So how you can do that to work? I will continue this process and in our next video, I will show you that things with the live example. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In our previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how you can create the e store method and here I just defining some of the required field and also I added our model that means the student model here I created one of the object and with this e student here I save all the data that means all field that data okay and after that save data I here I also added one of the redirect so it should be redirect to our home route so here I just defining our home route on particular that position if you go to the our route and here you can see for the home I just defining that name as a home so for the reasons here, I just defining the route as it should be rejected to our home route and with also some of the message. So here I defining one of the success message ID and that is our message. So now I want to do, I want to actually display that message in our home page and in our home, I already declare it like here. If you go to the route in our student controller, that is our index method. Okay. And into the index method, what exactly I redacted? I, in our index method, I just redacted to our welcome page. And your old campaigns on particular that position I want to visible it. Uh, like here, right now I don't need this. I remove all the things from here. And in particular that position, first of all, you have to define one of the if condition. Okay, like I just take one of the if condition. And here I want to do that work with the session. Like here I just define the session. And into the session here I have to define that ID. So where I just with like here I just defining that with ID. So this one. So for now I just copy it and particular that position I paste it and also now we have to do we have to end it like here I just and our if condition on particular that area and now on here I want to take one of the tape like you should be display some of the alert like here I want to add some of the success alert like if you go to that booster form like here you also get that component like here if you go to the component and there is an alert component so if you click on here and for the alert uh, right now I want to use this one that means that is actually the green okay so, so that is actually the success that means three so that is also the, all the day one two three that means this one I just copy it okay I just copy it and now here I paste on particular that position so now in particular that area I want to actually show that session so here I just defining that section okay I just defining that session and here I want to display that message ID so here our message so I just defining it on particular that area I hope you can well understand about it and also one thing like if you go to that our create page here I defining the route and there is actually post method so if you want to insert that data here you have to also add the things with the CSR field like here I want to add it on particular that positions like here I just define the CSRF and here I just define the CSRF underscore field. Okay, I just define the CSR field on particular that position. So without this CSR field, he will be not inserted all the data. That means all that name data, I will be not inserted. For the reasons here, I just added that our CSR field on particular that position. So now let's check this out. Our data is inserted or not. Click on the save all. So here I just click on the save all and now if you go to our page like here I just refresh it okay for now here I just defining as a Kazi and the last name I just defining as a Aryan and email ID I just define as a Kazi at the rate gmail.com and I just put some of the phone number and now click on the add data so now here it's showing as a app student not found uh, student let's check this out like here I already added one of the object as the student model I also added that the student like if you go to the controller and here <laughs> you can see that I I'm actually using the students so I just rename it better I just name it as the student because I call it as a student okay so for now I just rename it as a student so now that is actually the student model so I just change it and now I just click on the save all so that's our student model I just defining as a student and here and uh, that is our student perfect so now it should be work now I just click on the go back and now here I just refresh it again 
and if you browse it okay perfect now i just click on the kazi and now i just define as the arian and kazi at the rate gmail.com and here i just define the phone number so this type of one of the phone number and now i just click on the add data yes now you can see that student successfully added so if you go here and now if you click on the browse yes now you can see the first name is visible the last name is visible email id is also visible and phone number so we successfully insert all that our data in our database field i hope you can well understand about it so we did some of the mistakes so that the student so i just defining name as a, as a student so i change it or also make that sure you are changing that name that is student model so perfect so now it's perfectly work like here i want to insert again like here is add data now i just define as a john and here i just define as a john ma here the john at the rate gmail.com and i just put some of the phone number and now click on the add data yes now you can see it's now showing as a student successfully added so that is the message I just set up on here and I hope you can well understand about it. So that is our message ID and that is the message. So after that rejected in our home page, in our home page, I just display that message with the alert success. For the reasons it's now visible on here. And also one thing like here, I also added some of the validation. Okay. So if you also want to show that all the validation error, so that the things will be visible in our particular that position, that means in our create page. So now I want to work in our create page on here, like up into this position. Uh, okay, I just do that work on here. Um, better, I just define first of all one of the if condition. Like I just define if condition and here I just add and that if. And here I just define the and if. And now in our if condition, first of all, I just take one of the variable, like as a arrows. Okay. And for the errors I want to do for the every message, like here I just define that any. So here I just defining as a any on here. And I also want to do that work without using the for each. Like here I just define as a for each. Okay, because it should be the looping uh, for the reason size is defining as a for each on here. And now with this variable, so here I just define with this variable, I just defining as a all and i just defining all as error okay so i just make the things as a simple so for now i here i want to do i want to actually also show some of the alert message like if you go to that alert uh, right now i want to need this danger alert so that is actually the danger alert so i just copy that tape so here I just copy it that the danger and in particular that position I just paste it on particular that area. So now we have to do we have to and that for each. So here I just defining as the and for each. Okay, I just defining as and for each. And in particular that position I only want to print this error. So here I just copy it and in particular that position I just simply added uh, print that error. So I hope you can well understand about it. It is actually the one of the default one of the format to display that error. And here I just defining if errors any. That means if you get any error, then it should be show on particular that position with this variable. Okay. And also here I just defining the error with the all. That means some of the times is multiple field will be the blank. Okay. Like here if you uh, go here, like here, I just make that thing's first name and the last name as a blank, and I just only put that email address and the phone number. So, if for the reasons here, I just defining it as a all. So, for the multiple field, he'll be get all that error data, and here I just define the error that means the all error data. Okay, so for the reasons here, I just define two of these, and here I just define the for each in your for each, I just define call as error, and here I just simply display that error. Now let's check this out our field validation is working or not and here in our controller I already assigned that validation for all that field is required. So for now let's check this out I just click on the save all and now I just refresh it. And here is showing unexpected and if uh, what exactly the things I did wrong like here and if if condition there is a for each you can see I just put that spelling mistake again there is a for each. E A C H. Okay, so for the reasons actually get that error. Now I just click on the save all. 
that is for each for each and down here that is if if and down here now click on the save all and now if you refresh it yes perfect so now i just put that field as the empty and now if you click on the add data yes now you can see he gave all that error so that is the first name is required that is the last name is required email field is required and phone is required for the reasons here i just defining as a all okay he will get all that multiple field error and he will get and print that things on particular that position i hope you can well understand about it it's perfectly get all that error like here i is defining as a kazi uh, sorry as a jack i is defining as a jack ma and for now i just make the things email as a blank okay and i just put some of the phone number now click on the add data yes you can see there is an email field is required so you have to also add that email field so now i just define as a jack and then ma and here i just define the jack at the rate gmail.com and i just put some of the phone number and i click on the answer data yes you can see that the student successfully added I hope you can well understand about it and if you browse it all the data is perfectly inserted in our database table so in our code application I already complete our insert data so in our next video I will show you how can read all the data and visible that things in our home page and after that how can edit it and how can update that data and how can delete it step by step I will cover each and everything with you with a live example so Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In our previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how can insert all the data in our database table from our create page. So from this page here, if you put your first name, last name, email address, phone, and after that, if you click on the add data, then all the data will be saved in our database table, right? So now I want to do, I want to visible all the data in our form page, that means here. And here I also put some of the conditions like when this data will be saved. After that, it should be redirected to our home page. Like if you go to that controller in our store controller, I assign it. After saving that data here, I just put the return redact to our home. So it should be redacted to our home page. And if you go to our route, and here you can see that is our home. And for the home here, I just define our controller name in student controller that is index method now if you go to that student controller like here i already define it uh, here i already define our index method and into the index method i simply load that our welcome page right so that means this so that is our welcome page and now i want to do i want to read all that our database data so all the data i want to visible it in our home page okay that means that is actually our home page so in that position i want to visible all the data so how can do that work in this video i will show you that things with a live example for doing this better i already here using one of the material design bootstrap so now i want to use one of the table so for doing this is pretty much easy like here there is the md bootstrap i already discussed about that things with you and here you also get one of the table content like here there is an option for the table so now i just click on the table and into the table here there is a basic example so now i just select as a basic example and into the basic example here you get a lot of the style like there is also one of the style you can use it so there is all that code and also there is another table head options so it's pretty much cool and you can also find out different type of one of the table on here so right now better i i want to actually use this one so that is actually the one of the head area and all that our data will be visible like that way so for now first of all here i want to do i want to copy all that code okay so i just copy all that code and now i want to visible it in our welcome plate and after that if here before that section so in particular that position i just simply paste it so right now that's all that static data like if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like i just refresh it yes now you can see all that static data and table format is now visible on here so it's pretty much interactive on things for now i just copy all the things from here there is also bootstrap class so that's all that actually bootstrap class before i already added all that our bootstrap material all the css and JSS code in our page and now it's visible like that way and better uh, it's actually full white so i just want to add one of the bootstrap class as a container uh, like here on particular that position okay like after that 
a contain here and here I just define one of the div and in particular that position I just define one of the class and, and here I just define that class as a container okay I just define one of the bootstrap class and now I want to end it so I just start that div and after that table I just finish it now let's check this out I just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page yeah, now we see it's now onto the center and now it's still a bit closer. So right now that's all that is static data. So here I want to do, I want to read all the data from our database table with our all that field and I want to visible it on particular that position. For doing this, we don't need actually static data. I only need that field. Uh, like here, that is actually our first field and that is another tier. So I only want to take one. We do need this. I just uh, that is actually table that is our last container tape. So here I just remove it, and also there is a tier. I don't need this. I only want to take one tier, okay? Like here, I only want to take one, so there is a one tier. So here I want to make the things now dynamic and dynamically. I just want to get all the data from our database reveal and I just want to visually down here. So first of all here I have to do I have to assign all that our field like there is a our database all that field if you go here we have to as uh, visible our first name the last name email and the phone so now here I just define that all the th th means the table head so this one for the number here I just define the first name and the last name and here I just define as the email and also I want to take another two uh, like here this one is for the phone and also I want to take another table head for the action like for the edit or delete okay and now there is actually all that our tier now we have to also assign the TD so here there is a three six actually so here one two three four so here I have to assign two Okay, so here I assign two of this on here. So now if you click on the save all and now if you refresh it, like here I just refresh it. So now here you can see there is only one data, one static data is now visible on here. So now here I want to do, I want to get all the data from our, this table. So how can do that work? It's pretty much easy for doing this. We have to do, we have to work in our controller. Like here, if you go to our student controller, and here you can see I just returned that page on particular that position that is actually the welcome and now here I want to do I want to get all the data from our database table by the our model so for doing this first of all here you have to do you have to define one of the variable like here I just define as the students okay I just define one of the variable as the students and now I have to define our student model student model and here I want to get all so I just define as a all on particular that position it means you will get all the data from our student table okay that means if you go to our student so here you'll get all the data from this position I hope you can well understand about it for the reasons here I just define as a student all and now here I get all the data from our database table now I have to pass that in our welcome page right so if you want to pass it then you can do that work with using the compact so here you have to define it as a compact and into the compact with this compact you can actually pass all the data so here i get all the data and take that things with this variable right so now i have to do i have to actually pass that in our compact area so with the compact now i pass that student all the data in our welcome page I hope you can well understand about it so now we can actually access that student in our welcome page that means here so now I have to actually iterate all that field on particular that position so here first of all I just take one of the for each like here I just define as the at the rate for each and now I just take all the things I just compact it in our positions with the students okay so here with the students for now I just copy it and now here I want to actually for each all the data so with this students I just call as a student okay I just define as a as a student and now with this student you can actually iterate all that your database field and now first of all that is actually the for each so better I just want to finish that for each before the TD so here I just define as the and 
okay and for each i just defining it on particular that position and now with this student so here with this student like first of all there is actually the id so here i want to display that i do with that student and here i have to do i have to define our database field id so our database field id if you go here there is actually the id then the first underscore name that is the last underscore name the email and phone so now i want to actually visible it so here first of all i just want to define that id for that hash and then i have to define our first name so on particular that position with that student okay with that student i want to now visible our first name that means the first underscore name so here i just defining it underscore name and also i have to do the same things for the last name so here i just defining it uh, like for the is the student and now here i just defining the last underscore name okay so if you go to that position so you can see that is the last underscore name the email and the phone so here better i just copy it and now in particular that position i paste it so this one will be for our email and here this one after that email then the phone so here i just define the phone okay so make that sure there is actually our database field so in our database here you can see there is actually the phone that is the email last name so i just added all the things and this one is for the action so i will do that work later right now i just put as a edit okay and here I just define all the rd elect. So this type of one of the text, I literally I will also create one of the button on particular that position for this one. So now let's check this out. That's all you have to do. So now if you click on the save all, okay, I just click on the save all and now I want to refresh that page. Like here, I refresh it. Yes, now you can see there is a Kazi is first name, the last name, email address, phone number, so right now they have the three data in our database here you can see there is actually the three data and all the data is now perfectly visible on particular that position i think it's very much clear to you how much easily you can read all the data and visible that things in your page and here i just defining as a for each and that is students i just call with as a student so with this student i just simply add our database all that field and now it's perfectly visible on here in our next video, I will discuss about that edit and update option. Like if you want to update your phone number, email address, last name and the first name, how you can do that work in our next video, I will show you that things with a live example. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In our previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how you can read all that your database table and visible all the data on particular that position. And right now it's perfectly visible on here and i also added one of the action for the edit at the delay so in this video i will discuss about that edit option like if you click on the edit then it will be rejected to the edit page and our edit page will be just like our create page and first of all i want to visible all the data like that is actually id fast id data will be visible on particular that position with the first name last name email address and the phone number and after that i will update it i hope you can well understand about it because here you can see there is a one id data there is a two id data there is a three id data so when you click on the edit for the three id so all the three id name email address phone number will be visible so how can do that work in this video i will show you that things with the live example for doing this first of all here i, I just added one of the text as edit or delete so i want to actually for better look here, I want to add one of the Fafa edit, then it should be better. Okay, I want to add some of the icon for this one. Like if you go to the Google and if you add it as a Fafa edit icon. And here there is a Fafa pencil square. So now I just open it. So that is actually one of the icon. You can see that is actually the icon for now. I just copy it. And here I just assign it. I just assign it in our home blade. So if you go to our home page. That means here I defining that text. Okay, so right now I want to do, I want to actually add it first of all, one of the link, then it should be better. Like here, I just added one of the a head if. Okay, I just define one of the a head if and here in particular that position, I just added that icon. So now if you click on the save all and now if you refresh it, 
it's not visible because here we have to add one of the bootstrap cdn okay then it should be visible one of the like here if you search with the bootstrap like there is a bootstrap font awesome cdn you have to actually assign it like here you have to first of all go to that link and here there is actually the font awesome css and here if you go to that positions like the html right now i just copy it okay i just copy that link and now i want to go our main like here i assign it in our layout and in our layout there's a neighbor uh, i added that things in our main blade so here so you can see in our main blade i uh, assign one of the font use and now on particular that position i also want to add that bootstrap cdn like here there is a font or some cd and i just assign that things on particular that position so for now i just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page again like i just refresh it yes now you can see it's now perfectly visible on here so that is actually one of the bootstrap cdn class okay that is a font or some cdn class so you have to actually add that things uh so i hope you can well understand about it and now also i want to add the word for the delect so for the delect also they have another one is a fafa delect okay fafa delect and now i just click on the enter and here if you go to that fafa delect let's check this out so that is the delect so i want to actually not you want to use that one i want to use one of the trash uh, like here if you get that things from to this position like if you start that with the trash control a and trash like tr and here you can see there is actually the trash so i want to actually use this one so it's one will be better so here I just copy it and now go to our page that means the welcome page so that is for our edit page and now here i just want to add it very fast and in particular that position i want to add another one so that is for the, our trash for the delete okay now click on the save all and now if you refresh it again i refresh it yeah now you see there is an edit and there is a delete and also if you want to make the things little bit highlighted you can also do that work they have one of the bootstrap class like in our a here i just define one of the class and in particular that position this class name is a btn btn raised if you know little bit the bootstrap then you can well understand about it and then the btn primary and btn sm so here i just define as a sm so you should increase this button style little bit highlighted like here if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that again yes now you see it's now become very attractive and also i want to add the class for the our delete for now go to that position and here that is a class so i just copy it and now here that is our trash and in particular that position i added that class okay like here i just added that class on particular that position and for the delete here i just define as a danger now let's check this out i just click on the save all so that is a btn btn rise btn danger btn okay so that is also one of the bootstrap class like click on the refresh yeah perfect now you see that is actually the edit button and now that is our delete button so i hope you can well understand about it now i don't need this i remove all the things from here and now here i want to do if you click on the edit then it should be redacted to our edit page with this id so for doing this first of all we have to do we have to create on the route for this one like go to our route area like that is our web and here i want to create another one like here i just want to define as a gate method so i just better copy it in particular that position i want to create one of the route as edit okay i just define that edit and it should be edit with the id so for the reasons here i just define that id here i just define another parameter as id and in our student controller i have to create one of the method as edit method like here i just define as the edit okay and now i just define the page name as edit and after that edit i will also update it so i just make the things on here so here i just defining it as an update and update will be the post method so for the reasons here i just defining as a post i just define as an update okay it will be also updated with the id for the reasons here i just assign the id 
and in order student controller i have to create all the update method so here i just define that update and i just name it as a update perfect and now i want to do first of all i want to actually assign that edit in our this route like here i created that in our home page i put some of the link okay so here i just added that route on particular that position with the id so for doing this here i just defining as a route and route here i just define that route name as edit and here i just define that edit and it should be edit with the id because here you can say just defining it will, there is the edit and after that edit they have one of the id that means this id if you go to that positions like you can see there is actually one of the id so it will be updated by the id for the reasons i have to do i have to assign that id in our this link like if you go here in our home there is edit and after that i want to update that id with this id so here i already assigned that id as a student id and this id is now visible in our page like here you can see there is actually one id two id three id so for now i just define that id on particular that position okay so here i just define that id and now if you click on the save all then you'll be well understand about it like i just click on the save all and now i just want to refresh it and now if you put your cursor on particular that position here you can see it's now showing as a block and then the edit and the one id and then there is a two id and also there is a three id i hope you can well understand about it so now if you click on the edit then it should be directed to the one other page as edit page so here um, i want to do i want to create one of the edit page in our view like here i want to create and now click on the save as and i just name it as edit at dot blade dot php okay so now i just save it and as i told you our edit page will be just like our that is actually create page okay it should be just like our create page and i will customize it like here if you go to the, our create page so that is our create so for now i just copy whole things okay i just copy whole things from here and now i want to add the things in our edit blade dot php page and here first of all i want to visible all that our data in this field area with the value so before doing this i have to do i have to find out that a specific id data so here if you go to our route i already created one of the controller that is the edit method so now i have to create this edit method in our student controller like go to the our controller student controller and here i want to create that method like as a public and then function and the edit method okay so here i just define that edit method on particular that position and also it should be edit with by the id like here as i told you if you go to that place you can see that is actually showing as edit and the one id and if you go to this place that is edit the two id okay so also you have to get one of the id on particular that position so here i just defining as an id I just defining one of the id on here and now with the student model i first of all here i just defining one of the variable as a student and now with our student model i want to find out a specific some of the id so here i just define that student model and now i want to add the find okay find this id so here i just defining one of the id on particular that position i hope you can well understand about it and now we have to do we have to return this so here i just define that as a return and return view and return view which page i already created one of the page in our views that is actually the edit page so it should be rejected to this page so here i just defining as edit so here i just define that edit page and in our edit page i already get all that our specific some of the id and i just take that all id data in our student variable right so now I want to compact it and pass that things in our indeed page. For the reasons here, I just defined that compact and compact with our DC student. So now here I just pass that student variable with get all that specific some of the ID. And here I pass that things in our edit page. So now in our edit page, we can actually use that student. I hope you can well understand about it. Now here you have to assign the semicolon. So now go to the edit page and here if you go to that edit so here that is actually our edit plate and in our edit plate we don't need to change anything like here i just defining as edit okay it should be the edit page and also for the edit i created one of the route so that is i created one of the route for as a update 
like there is a update route okay so i will do that work later right now i just want to actually update it like here i just defining as a route update and that is also the post method for the reasons here i just defining as a post method so now that's and also i added the csrf field on particular that position and here you have to define that value as i told you first of all i want to visible all the data so here i just defining the value and here value will be uh, our i just get all the things with this student like i just passed it from here with that student okay i just passed that things with this student so now with this student i can actually i create all that display all the data on here like here i just defining as a with this student and here i just defining our database field name so our database field name on you know database uh, that is actually the first underscore name and the last underscore name so i just defining as a first underscore name so i just defining it so it should be visible on here so that is actually the value and now better i just copy it i just copy it now i also have to add the things on here there is another one and that is also another one so for now there is a value so there should be our last name so i just defining our database field name as a last name and also this one is the email and also another one that is actually the value so this value will be the phone okay so that means our database field name so i hope you can well understand about it what exactly the things i did on particular that position so here i only want to visible that data with that student because in our student controller in our edit method i already get our specific sound the id and here i just pass that id and compact that things in our edit page for the reasons in our edit page i can use that student variable right like for the reasons here you can see i just use with the student i just define that name so now let's check this out i just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like i just refresh it now i want to edit it like if you click on the edit here it's showing as a route update uh, i didn't actually add any id i understand what exactly the things i did wrong like here you can see i just defined one of the route as an update but if you go to our route i already created one of the route with the update and also with the id so here you have to assign that id okay so better i just defining it on here with our id so our id i just defining it with that student and that means with this student i just copy it and here i just defining the id so first of all here i just defining that id and then our route so perfect now let's check this out again i just click on the save all and now go back and refresh it again now i want to edit yes now you can see there is actually edit and after that edit they have one of the id like here if you go to our controller that means the student controller that is the edit method and in our edit method here you can see in our with this model that means the student model i find out a specific some of the id data so for the reasons that is one data is now visible on here there is a kazi arian kazi adorate gmail.com and also phone number and now if you go here now i just click on edit so now there is the edit data is two and here you can see there is only the two id specific data is now visible on here for the reasons i just defining that conditions that find a specific some of the id data and here i just compact it and i just pass that things in our edit page and in our edit page i only just visible that all the data like there is a value with this value i just define the first name last name email and the phone number for the reasons you can see it's now perfectly visible on here like there is our another one that is a jack now click on the edit only the jack data is now visible on here i hope you can well understand about it in our next video i will show you about the update portions like if you want to change the name if you want to change the last name if you want to change the email address or phone number and after that if you click on the update then all the data will be updated and after that updated it should be redirected to our home page so how can do that work in our next video i will show you that things with a live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our previous video i already discussed about that edit options like if you click on the edit then it should be rejected to the edit with a specific sound the id and here you can see it's now showing as a specific id in first name the last name the email address and the phone number 
So right now in this video, I will show you how you can update all the data. For doing this, I already created one of the route for this one. Like if you go here, there is a route as an update and also you should be updated with one of the ID. And here in your student controller, there is our update method. So this is the update method I have to create. And also in our edit page here, if you go to that positions, like I already added that route as update with the ID. Okay. So here I you defining as a first of all, there is an update method. And after that, there is actually the ID for the regions here. I also assign as an update. And after that update, there is the ID. So this ID means if you go to our database table, so that is actually the ID, right? I hope you can well understand about it. An update means what? Update means you will be insert that data again. So for that inserting the data, I already created one of the method in our student controller as a uh, this one that is actually store. So it will be the just like that same. And here only the difference you will be insert that data with the ID. That means the specific sum of the ID, right? So now first of all, I want to do, I want to create the, our update method like here. I just define as a public and then function and our method is update. Okay, I just defined that our update method. So here there is our update. And as I told you, when you insert it, like before, I just defining as a request and the request. So for now, I just copy it. And here, I just defining as a request with that request. And also, if you go to our route here, you can see that is an update. And after that update, you have to also assign the ID. So for now, I want to take another parameter on particular that position, like here, uh, in particular that area, I just defining one of the ID. So here I just defining the ID and rest of this will be the just like same here. I also before insert, I also want to validate it. All that field will be required and then all that our student model and then field and save the data. Okay. It's pretty much the same things. I just copy whole things from here. Uh, I just copy whole things from to this position. And now in our update method, I just simply paste it. Okay. So I just simply paste it on particular data area. So it should be the same like here first of all you will be get that validation and then uh, you will be uh, save the data only the difference is here i just defining one of the id so now i want to update a specific some of the id so for the reasons here i want to do in our student model here i assign as a find okay find with our this id so here i just simply add that id on particular that position I hope you can well understand about it and rest of will be the same that is our this student here there is a fast name and there is a request the fast name and then after that he'll be saved and when it should be saved I just redacted to the home page okay so you should be redacted to our home page that means our welcome page with some of the message so here when it should be updated then I want to display some of the message as a student successfully updated Okay, so here I just defining that updated and this is the message will be redacted to our home as I told you I already displayed that one of the message here you can see that it will success message and here it's also showing as a alert alert success So perfect. So it should be now work. I hope you can well understand about it He will be updated with a specific some of the ID now. Let's check this out I just click on the save all and now if you go here I just refresh it like here go to the home and now I want to update as a Kazi like here I just want to update that one John because the edit I just define as a one one and I just defining as a John one I just defining as a one one number for addition purpose I'm using it now click on the add data yes now you can see it's now showing as the student successfully updated and also our first name is now updated, the last name is updated, email address updated, and phone number also updated. So we successfully updated our that data. And if you go to our database and if you click on the browse again, now you see it's also updated on particular that position. I hope you can well understand about it. And also if you want to update like Jack, like I just click on the edit. A better uh, that is actually our edit page. I just want to make that button name as an update. I uh, go to our edit page and here there is an add data so I just define as an update okay I just define button name as an update now click on the save all refresh that page yeah now you can see it's update so I just define only the jack one and my one and click on the update 
yeah students successfully updated jack one and the ma one i hope you can well understand about it how can update your field data in our next video i will discuss about the delete options like if you want to delete it then how can delete it in our next video i will show you that things with the live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in your previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how can update your all the data and also here I inserted some of the demo data for you. Okay, so in this video, I want to show you if you click on the delay, then first of all, it should be show some of the message that are you sure to delay. So if you click on the yes, then it should be gone from to this position. Okay, rather than it should be load that particular that page. So how can delete your data in this video, I will show you that things with a live example. For doing this, first of all, I want to do, I want to create one of the route, like here, uh, that is edit, we don't need this, that is a main blade, we also don't need it, create, I just remove all the things from here. So in our route, first of all, I want to create one of the route, as I told you, in our route method, if you want to delete some of the data, then you have to use the delete method. So here, now I just define the delete, okay, I just define the delete method, and then it should be redirected to the delete, so here I just define as a delete. Okay, delete and also it should be deleted by the ID. So you have to also assign it. And in our student controller, in our student controller, I want to create one of the method as a delete method, and I just name it as a delete. I hope you can well understand about it. And now in our student controller, we have to create this delete method. So now go to our student controller, and here I want to create another method, like as a public, and then function and then the method okay there is a delete method also as i told you we have to delete it with by the id so for the reasons you have to get that id so here i just define that id and here as i told you it should be deleted that data by the id for the reasons first of all here i just define our student model and in our student model here i just define on the find and find some of the specific ID. So that is actually our ID. So here I just define that ID on particular that position, and then I just want to delete it. So here I just define one of the Laravel method as the delete method. So here I just define that delete method on particular that position. And after the delete, it should be redirected to our um, like here. I want to do after the delete, it should be redirected to our home page. Okay, I already discussed about that things with you here. I just define that return. I return and redact to our home that means in our home page welcome page with some of the id like there is actually the success message so right now i want to do that is actually the student successfully updated so now i just define as a student delete successfully okay delete successfully this type of message it should be visible and now i have to do i have to work in our welcome page that means here so here I added one of the buttons. So now go to that place like there is our welcome plate. And here hmm, that is actually the page. Okay. So that is actually the heady for the delete data. So here I just define one of the icon. So first of all, here you have to define one thing. Like here I want to take one of the form for this one. Like I just define as a form. Okay, I just define one of the form. And into the form here, first of all, I just define one of the method and I just define as a post method and for the post method i also want to define one of the id and here i want to take one of the id because of as i told you when you click on the delete first of all it should be show some of the pop-up message that are you sure to delete so if you click on the okay then it should be deleted so for doing this first of all here i for education purpose i'm using one of the id as a delete okay the delete and then i just define as a form and then I here I just defining our ID that means our database field ID so here with this student that is actually the ID okay so here I just assigning it so I will show you then it will be very much clear to you why I am actually using that ID and after that what exactly we have to do we have to put some of the action so here I just define one of the action like uh, I just copy it it should be just like that same and here I just define that action in our route. I already created one of the route and I just assigned the name as a TLAC, right? So for now, I just copy it. So I just want to add that things. And here you can see that you have the route as a TLAC. And after the TLAC, they have some of the ID. For the reasons here, I just define as a route and the TLAC route. And after the TLAC, here there is our ID. 
I hope you can well understand about it. I want to delete that data with a specific sound of the ID. For the reasons here in our controller, I just defining it, find the ID, and then he will be deleted. So now I just define the trout on particular that position. And now also here I have to assign our CSRF like here. Uh, better I on particular that position. I just define the CSRF on here because I define as a post. So I just define a CSRF underscore field. So I just define as a CSRF field on particular that position. And then I also want to add another one like here. I just copied and now I want to take another one as a method. Uh, like here is a define as a method okay method underscore field and here I just defining as a delete so here I just defining our method as a delete method so I just defining it on here so better I just put the things as a on particular that position like here I just put some of this style and here I just define as a display and I just define as a non okay so here I just added our CSRF field and method field for the delay and after that that is actually our form is ended on particular that position and after that I want to do I want to add one of the button for the delay like I show you here I just define one of the button okay I just define one of the button and I want to finish it uh, like here I just cut it and I just want to finish it after that A I just want to finish it on particular that position and here I want to do I want to add some of the JavaScript okay like here I just define on the on click I define on the on click and into the on click in particular that position I just define all the if condition and if here I just define on the confirm okay if I just define as a confirmation and if confirmation I just want to show some of the message like are you sure to delete this data so this type of one of the message it should be visible when you click on the delete first and also they have the another things like when you click on the uh, delete then you should be show some of the pop-up message are you sure to delete so they have the two options if you click on the okay that means if you click on the submit then this data will be deleted rather than there have also will be one of the button as a cancel so if you click on the cancel then it should be redacted to the same page without loading so for the reasons here i just put one of the conditions like here uh, i just put some of the condition on here i just define that event and also they have some of the javascript as a prevent default okay i just define as a prevent default for this one and after that here i want to actually put that actions like here i just define the document dot get element by id so here i just defining it so now here i want to define one of the id like here i already taken that one of the id so now i just want to defining it on particular that position like here that is a data delete from so for the reasons here i just define one of the id and now there is a delete from with this our database field id and here i just defining as a submit then you will be actually the submitted so here i just define the submit button else I want to do the another work okay so here I just defining as a else uh, like that is actually finished on here on particular that position I just define as a else okay I just defining as a else on here else you will be redacted to same page without load okay so as I told you before so now here I just define as event again and here I just define as a prevent prevent default Okay, without load, he will be redacted. So here, I just added that command. So after that, this one. So now that's all you have to do. Okay, now that's all for that delete. Now let's check this out. I just click on the save all. Now if you go to that page and refresh it. Now here is showing as unexpected this uh, in our student controller. Uh, here, here you can see I just miss up that there are actually the two so in our controller that means the student controller that is a delete method here you can see I just define uh, so that is actually pretty much a small mistake I hope you can well understand about it find and then ID that is a delete perfect 
So now I just click on the save all and now I refresh that page again. Yeah, now you can see it's perfect. So now that is actually our delete and into the delete that is actually the marketable. Uh, let's check this out. If you go to the uh, place here, that is actually the A class. Okay, better I just remove it. I don't need this because here I started that things from here. Uh, that is actually the one the A. After that, so here I don't need this here. I just simply added one of the class. So here I remove that A. Okay. So here I just remove it. Now let's check this out. Click on the save all. And now if you refresh it, yeah, now you can see it's perfect. Now it's gone from this area. And now here if you click on the delete. Now you can see it's now showing as a one of the JavaScript that's are you sure to delete this data and also here is a two button one is the okay and another is the cancel okay so if you click on the cancel like here you can see it's now redirected to the same page without loading so that's the things I defining on here that is the event and the prevent default and here you can see I just defined that ID so that is actually the ID so when it should be cancelled then it should be redirected to the same page without loading and if you click on the submit then it should be deleted so that's the things i just defining on here now let's check this out it's working or not i just click on the refresh again and now i want to delete like this one there is a test so click on delete and now you can see it's now showing as the are you sure to delete data so i just click on the ok yes now you can see it's now showing as a student delete successfully so if you go here now you see that the test is gone from to this position i hope you can well understand about it now we successfully insert some of the data so here you just do that again here i just define as a test okay test some name define that another one i just define some of the demo text and here is define the phone number click on the add new yeah data is inserted successfully if you want to edit then you can edit this one click on the update yeah you can see that is actually the updated and also if you want to delete it so they have some of the pop-up message if you click on the ok then it should be deleted successfully so our code application that means how you can read data how you can insert data how you can update data and how you can delete data each and every functionality I discuss about that things with you so that is actually the main core thing so if you are just beginner level if you want to just start it so this section will help you a lot and if you achieve that main basic core things then Laravel will be very much interactive for you so step by step we will move more deep in Laravel so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our all previous video I already discussed about that Laravel core functionalities that means how you can create data, how you can read data, how you can update data, and how you can delete data. So each and everything I already discussed about that things with you with the live example. Hope it's very much clear to you. In this video, I want to show you like if you want to add some of the designation. I just added some of the demo data for right now. They have the six data. Okay. So if you want to add some of the designation, like after that five or after the ten, it should be redirected to the next page. So that is actually the designation. It's very much easy to create designation in Laravel. How you can do that work? I will show you that things with the live example. For doing this, first of all, you have to understand like here in our home page, I just defined that one of the method. Like if you go to this place, like in our that is student controller, and in our know, student controller, here if you see like in our index method, and in our index method, I just load that page. That means the welcome page. And here there is all that our data I just added that table in our home page that means the welcome page now I want to do like before I get all the data from our table that means the student table right so now here I want to put some of the limitation like for now this all the data will be visible on here but right now I want to put some of the limitation so if you want to do that work then here you have to write down on particular that position as a designate Okay, so I just define as a designate and into the designate here right now I define as a five. That means here I just put some of the limitation as a five. That means after that five, that means here it's only visible that five data on particular that position. Okay, so let's check this out. I just defining as a designate as a five and now if you click on the save all, 
and now that is actually the six data so now I just refresh it yes now we see it's now showing as a five data I hope you can well understand about it so now I want to do I want to add some of the basic net like because we have one another data for doing this that is our welcome page so now now go to our welcome page and into this page here that is actually the forage ended on particular data area so if after that forage so here I just added one of the Laravel command so I will define as a student okay student uh, because here I already compact one of the things that is a students okay so it should be students and here I just defining that in our welcome page because here I am I am already outside of the forage for the reasons here I have to define that students okay because in our forage I already define that one as a students as a student okay so right now I am outside of the forage for the reasons I have to add that variable as a students which actually I passed from here I hope you can well understand about it so now in particular that position you have to do you have to add, add one of the function as a link okay I just defined that links on particular that area so that's all that's all you have to do for showing the designation like click on the save all and now if you refresh that page like here I just refresh it yes now we see there is actually one that is a two page so if you click on the two so they have another data is a six number data is now visible on particular that position I hope you can well understand about it how much easily you can add that designation in Laravel so now it's perfectly working on here so thanks for watching and if you have any query and if you have any question just let me know about it I'm here for help you I will try to help you as much as I can so don't hesitate to let me know about your problem I will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in this section I will discuss about Laravel default authentication system like how can install Laravel, how can create database and configure it, how can set up default authentication for the logging and register page, how can set up reset password and also how can add another field for the change password. So step by step each and everything I will show you with a live example. So let's start it with how can install Laravel in your local host. I will create this project in our local host and for the local host I am using the XAM. First of all you have to do you have to run the Apache and the MySQL. I already run two of these. In our previous section I already discussed about that things with you. When you install that XAMPP you will get one of the folder in your C drive where actually you install it. Like if you go to that positions like there is a C drive and when you install that XAMPP you will get this type of one of the folder. So now you have to open it and then you have to go to the ST docs. And ST docs is the main root directory of your local host. So I will create this project on particular that position first of all here I want to create one of the folder for our project and here I name it as a Laravel okay or I just name it as a Lara and into the Lara in particular that folder I want to install that Laravel and if you go to that Laravel official website and if you go to that documentation and into the documentation here you can see that the latest version is Laravel 6. So I will create this project with using that Laravel 6 then it will be very much helpful to you and also they have some of the system requirements and here you can see there is a PHP version should be equal or greater than the 7.2 so if you only install that XAMPP if you go to that local host you will get that PHP info so if you click on here that is actually 7.3.7 in your previous section I already discussed about that things with you how can update your local host PHP version so right now I am using the PHP version 7.3 that means it's now capable to install Laravel right so now I want to install it and if you go here if you want to install it through the composer you can install it okay so right now I want to install it through the composer then it will be very much easy so how can install Laravel 6 with using the composer I will show you for doing this first of all here you have to do you have to go to the get composer.org and here there is option for the download and into the download they have also some of the command line installation okay so you have to actually run that command before run it you have to find out that CMD like that is actually our directory so in particular that folder I want to install it so here you have to write down as a CMD 
and now here you can see it's now redirected to the main path that means the xam the stdocs has a main directory and into the directory i created one of the folder for the lara okay in particular that position i want to install that composer first so now i want to do it that is actually the command line installation so for now i just copy whole things from here and now i want to paste on particular that position so now here you can see it's now installing that composer and make that sure you are connected with the internet and also they have option for the unlink so if you click on the unlink then this composer setup.php will be gone from here so right now i want to unlink it and if you now click on the enter then it should be gone you can see it's now gone from here so on particular that position now i want to install that laravel so i already installed that our composer and when you install that laravel with via the composer then they have some of the command lines so right now i just copy it and now go to that position and here i paste it so that is actually the composer create project and project is laravel laravel block so this block is means your project name so if you want to change it you can change it from here like here i just name it as a l auth okay so this type of one of the folder i want to create and in particular that position i will create our project so he will create one of the folder in particular that position as a auth okay l auth so now i just click on the enter so it will loaded all the requirements files for installing that laravel so you have to wait for it and make that sure you are connected with the internet because he will download all that file through the internet so it may take little time when it will be done then i will come back again here you can see is downloading all the resources one by one from the internet and also he created one of the folder as a l auth so that is the name i just defining for our project so as i told you make that sure you are connected with the internet so when it should be completely done then i will come back again our laravel installation is successfully done so here he get all the necessary file you can see that i load all the necessary file on particular that position and now if you want to access it like here if you go to that positions right now we don't need this now i go to that local host and after that i created one of the folder as a lara and then i just create another name folder as a l uh, what it is i created another folder as a l auth and now click on the enter and here you can see redirected to all that file so here you have to go to that public like if you go to the public and here you can see laravel installation is successfully done on here i hope you can well understand about it and if you also want to remove that public you can also do that work it's pretty much simple process you have to go to the server and particular that position i just copied and here i just paste it and now first of all here you have to you have to rename it as index dot php okay i just name it and then you have to go to the public and in our public here there is one of the st access so now i just copy that st access file now go back and this root directory that means our project root directory here you have to paste it so i just simply paste it on particular that position and now if you remove that public like here i don't want to use that public and if you click on the enter yes now you can see our project is perfectly loaded in our main directory that means a lot i hope you can well understand about it so there is actually totally fresh laravel 6 i install it on particular that position so here they have no logging and register button so we have to also add that authentication so step by step i will show you so in your next video i will show you how can create the database and how can configure it so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in your previous video, I already discussed about that things with you. How can you install Laravel 6 with using the composer? In this video, I will show you how can create the database and how can configure it. For doing this, first of all, you have to do you have to go to your local host and then you have to go to the PHP My Admin. And into this PHP My Admin, you have to create your database. Like they have option for the database. Like here, I click it. And into this position there is a create database so i already have some of the database on particular that position now i want to create new one so right now i want to create as a lara okay so this type of one of the database i want to create and now simply create as a create so i have create our database as a lara so now i have to do i have to configure it in our project so that means this project 
for doing this i want to use our sublink test editor so i will create our project with using that editor okay whatever the editor you want to like you can choose it but right now i'm using this one so first of all i want to do i want to actually add our project on particular that position is drag and drop i just simply added that on particular that position so in our previous section i already discussed about that things with you all the things that is the app and here you will get your all that controller and also there is the resources for the view all the file you will get on particular that position and also there is actually the database and here all the migrate file will be visible on here so there's the three things will be needed and also there is the another one is the route and into the route there is a web so i already discussed about that things with you right now i want to do i want to actually configure our database for doing this you have to go to that if and particular that position is pretty much simple like here there is a database name so i already created one of the database on particular that area as a lara okay so for now i just copy it and here i simply paste on particular that position that means that is our database name and also that is the username so right now i am using the local host and into the local host by default username as a root and right now i don't have any password for the reasons it's now blank so you'll get all that information if you go to our database and here there is our user account and into the user account here you can see that the username is by default root and password they have no password for the reasons i just make the things as a blank and also i just using that username as a root and that is the database i created as lara i hope you can well understand about it it's pretty much simple things so over here i already configured is totally done so now i just click on the save all and if you now refresh it if everything okay it should be okay you can see it's perfect so here right now i created one of the database so if you go here and i created one of the database as a lara that means this one right now that is actually totally blank and also i configure it on particular that position in our project i hope you can well understand about it in our next video i will discuss about that auth system how can create the authentication that means the laravel default authentication system for the locking and register i will show you that things with live example so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video, I will discuss about that things with you, how can create the database and how can configure it. Right now, I want to do, I want to set up Laravel default authentication system. So how can do that work? If you go to that Laravel official website and here, if you go to that security and into this position that is the authentication. So now click on here. And as I told you right now, I'm using Laravel version six. So here, if you, find out a lot of the informations like there is actually the routing and here you have to run two of these okay before if you using that as a laravel 5.8 so before that was actually the another command line if you go here there is a routing uh, you will get another you can see that is actually the routing before you have to run this command that is php addition make or so before if you run that command then automatically he will create it all the necessary authentication file and folders so right now i am using that laravel 6 so here now i select other laravel 6 and it's a little bit different so here you can see that you have to run as a composer required laravel tape and also there is a php addition view so now we have to run two of these in our root folder so now go to our root folder that means in particular that position so that is our project folder so now in particular that folder, i just click on the cmd so here make that sure your path is perfect so in our local host as the st docs and after that that is our lara and into the lara folder i created our project as a a log okay so now you have to run two of this command line in particular that position so now i simply copy it and now here i just paste it and now click on the enter so he'll created some of the necessary file on particular that area like he will create one of the route so here if you go to this position in particular that position he will create one of the route okay and also he will create one of the migration on here in our view that means the resources view folder he will create some of the things so now it's take little time take that sure you are connected with the internet because he will be downloaded some of the file from the internet so it may take little time you have to wait for it and here you can see there is a packages modified generated successfully so here all that our packages is now generated successfully 
and now I want to do I want to run another command that that for the auth okay so now I just copy it and now he will create some of the folder particular that position and also he created one of the route I will show you like I just paste it and now click on the enter yes now you can see it created in a view that is a auth and also created another folder as a layout and here there is a app blade okay so here you created some of the file as I told you so right now that is modified so now if you go to the web now you can see he created one of the another route so that is actually gate home the home controller index method so you created also one of the route especially when you actually run that command line so here I just run that command line with the PHP artisan UI view and auth and also there is a auth folder is now automatically added and in our migration is added and also if you go to that HTTP and here there is a controller into the controller also created automatically one of the folder at particular that position as a auth so now perfect so we perfectly did that work and now if you refresh your page like here I refresh it yes now you can see the automatically created authentication for the locking and the register so if you click on the blocking so there is actually the locking page and there is actually the register so that is the by default but here all the CSS file is now missing so you have to run it like if you go here they have also some of the instructions there's all those views use the bootstrap CSS framework but you are free to customize them however you wish so now I want to actually customize that file so first of all I want to find out that file location so if you go to that area like here uh, there is a resource and into the resource there is a view and into the view there is a op and here you can see that this is the locking page so that is actually our locking page that means if you go here so that is actually the locking page actually comes from particular that position and also there is our register so now also they have the another folder as a layout and there is an app blade and into the app blade here you can see there is actually the CSS app CSS so that's all that missing so now I want to do I want to add some of the bootstrap class on here so if you go to that bootstrap CDN and then there is actually the one of the link so now I want to do I want to add that CSS so I just simply copy it and now there is a CSS I want to add that so here I just paste on particular that position and also we need some of the JS file so here some of the JS file also here so now I just copy all the JSS file from to this position so that is actually the bootstrap CDN file so now I just paste it on particular that area so now if you click on the save all and now I want to refresh it again like I just refresh it yes now you can see that is the by default Laravel authentication system how much easily you can do that work like there is a register so that is a register page that is a logging page so there is a forget so that is also the forget page so how Laravel default authentication system actually work I will show you step by step into this section so now here we successfully set up our default authentication system now I want to do I want to migrate it Okay, I already discussed about that things with you before like in our this database there is a migrations and by default they have some of the migrations file for the password for the user that means the create user so if you migrate it then it should be created one of the table in our database that I already created as a Lara okay I already created one of the database as a Lara so you should create one of the table as a users okay and also there is all that field so right now that is all the default field so if you want to add uh, another field on particular that position you can also add that things on here so right now I want to make that things as far it is so now I want to migrate it so as I told you when you migrate then you should be created one of the table in our database so that is our database you created one of the table as a user and all that field will be just like that one like that should be some of the ID the name email and the email verification also the password okay so I will show you then it will be very much clear to you like right now um, that is our project so that is our main project directory and now I want to add our migrations like I just define as a PHP artisan migrate now here I just click on the enter 
and also i will in our previous section i already discussed about that things with you also here some of the error okay so you have to actually add your specific limits so better i just show that things again like you have to do you have to copy it it's pretty much common on the error if you search it on google then you will get this type of one of the information like here that is one of the information that you have to update so that is the one of the error is a specific key was too long error so now i want to actually solve it here you can see there is all that solving information like you have to go to the app providers and app service providers so now i want to go on particular that area like you have to go to the app and then actually the providers and there is the app service providers so in particular that positions they have only one one of the class so right now i want to add another one like here you can see so now i just copy it and here i have to add it and also you have to add another one like this one in our boot method so that is actually our boot method you have to add it so now in our boot method here i have to add that things on here so that's all you have to do for preventing that error now i just click on the save all and when you already migrate like here i already migrated so some of the file is already created successfully okay so now we have to remove it like if you go to our database and now if you click on that extraction now you can see automatically created the users and the migrates so now it's they have some of the errors so right now i just select two of these and delete that things from here so i just remove that things from to this position i hope you can well understand about it now i just want to do that work again uh, better i just remove it and now go to that again cdn okay cmd and here i just define the php artisan migrate so i just defining it and click on the enter yes now you can see all that migration table is now perfectly now created i hope you can well understand about it and now if you go here now if you click on the structure and now if you go to the users as i told you when you migrate then you'll be created some of the table like in our if you go to these positions like there is a user and you can see you created one of the table as a user so here you can see created one of the table as a users and also all that field so now here there is a name id email there is a email verification that is a password so all that you can see there's all that field is now perfectly added on here so now here i already migrated so perfectly i did that work now if you want to logging like here i just click on the login first of all i want to register it like here i just name it as a kazi and i just put on the email address as a kazi at the rate gmail.com and here i just put on the password seven eight and also i put the another one three four five six seven eight that is a kazi at the rate gmail.com now i just click on the register yeah you can see now you are successfully logged in i hope you can well understand about it so if you now click on the logout now if you click on the login and put the kazi at gmail.com and here i just put the password now click on the locking yeah perfectly is now working and also if you go to the database now if you click on the browse so i already registered in particular that position as a name kazi that is the email address the email verification so i will do that work later and also he created one of the hash password on particular that position and that is actual number token so it's not perfect i hope you can well understand about it so here they have some of the error so if you search it you can get that resources from here i hope it's very much easy to you right now and also i added some of the bootstrap cdn perfect okay so our locking authentication is now perfectly working and also i inserted the data in our database so i hope you can well understand about it how you can set up the default authentication system in laravel 6. in your next video i will discuss about password reset options like they have also one of the option for the forget your password so how can actually reset that password in our next video i will show you that things with a live example so thanks for watching i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how you can create the Laravel default authentication system. And here now our locking and register page is now perfectly visible on here. And also you can create some of the registration from here and also you can logging it.
and all the data will be saved in our database table as a user table. So right now in this video, I want to show you how you can create the reset password. Like here, if you forget your password, then they have option for the forget your password. So if you click on here, and here you have to do, you have to put your email address. And if you click on the send password reset link, then he will be created one of the link for reset password. So how can do that work? How can set up it in Laravel in this video? I will show you that things with the live example. For doing this in Laravel is automatically ready-made all the things. Like if you go to the app and there is a HTTP, there is a controller. When you create the auth, it created automatically some of the controller in our auth folder. So into this auth folder here, you can see there is a forget password. So all that forget password, that is all that method. So if you put your cursor, you get all that information, that the backend information. Okay, here you can see all the things is ready-made. All that this file actually working for this um, forget password, the register, the reset password. So there is also another controller. You can see there is a reset password controller.php. So if you put your like that is actually the one of the use the reset password. So here if you put your cursor, you can see there is a definition for the bundle Laravel framework and there is a reset password.php actually working into the backend. Okay, if you click on here, it should be rejected to particular that page. And here you can see all the reset method, all the reset methods that broken actually working for this one. There's a password. There's all the true is automatically added on here. So you don't need to do anything. All the things like he'll be created around the hash password, there's a hash and the Mac. Okay. So all the things is now ready made on particular that area. So you don't need to do anything. So that's all the backend file actually working for this controller. Okay. So now I, all I have to do, I have to actually uh, just set up that file. For doing this better, I want to create one of the register uh, with our some of the email address. Like that is actually not valid email address. For right now, I want to do, I want to create some of the temporary email address. Like if you go to that tab, tab email, like they have the one of the website is a tab mail.org. So right now I just open it. So this site will give you one of the temporary email like here you can see there is one of the temporary valid email and you can check your all the team box on particular that position so there is a tab and hyphen that is mail.org so right now i want to create one of the registration for the user with this email address there is a valid email address for the temporary use for education purpose i'm using it like i just click on the register and here i just name it as a rdn and now I just put that temporary valid email address as a, this one. I just put some of the password. Seven eight, and here I just define one two three four five six seven eight. So I hope you can well understand about it. Now with this email address, I just want to create one of the register for the Aryan. Now click on the register. Now here you can see I am now successfully logged in. So here there is the Aryan is visible. Now I am logging, and if you go to the database and if you click on the browse. Now you can see there is actually name is Aryan and there is email. For education purpose, I am using some of the temporary email uh, on particular that area. So now I want to do, I want to go here and now I just click on the logout. And now I want to create as a login. Okay, so now here I just define our temporary email address which I already created where I already registered with this email address. Okay, so now I just put the email address and here I just put some of the inappropriate password and if you click on the login, now you see it's now showing as a this credential not match. So now I want to do, I want to actually forget that password. Like here, I just forget it. So now I want to reset that password. Okay, now here option for the forget password. So now here, if you put that email address and here, if you send it, then it should be redacted to some of the reset password being on particular that mail, on particular that area. Okay, so we have to actually configure it. We have to set up it. So how can do that work? I will show you. For doing this, it's pretty much easy. Then you have to go to your backend. And here you have to go to that if, like here. In particular, that position, first of all, there is an app URL. In here, you have to define your appropriate file location. So like if you're working with the domain, then you have to add your domain name on here. So right now I am working in a local host. So now here you have to define your local host link. Like that is actually our project. There is a Lara and then the LAN. Okay. 
so l auth so that is our project name so for now i just copy it and here i just paste on particular that position i hope you can well understand about it and here i already define our database our username and the default password they have no password right now okay and now if you have to work in our this area so like first of all there is a drive there is a mail driver so here i have to add that as a smtp and now i want to also add the things to the google so if you go to that gmail on here like here i just define as a gmail smtp configuration like this one and here you can see there is a gmail smtp setup settings so here there is a server address is a smtp at the rate gmail.com so right now i want to do i want to copy it so here i have to do i have to defining it on particular that host area okay so i just simply paste on particular that position as smtp.gmail.com and also you have to define the port name so here our port for the tsl and if you are using the ssl then you have to use the 465 so right now i am using the tsl so here i just defining as a 587 so i just copy it and here i just defining it as a 587 and also there is a mail encryption so mail encryption means here i you define as a tsl so if you are using the SSL, then you can use that SSL. Right now I am using as a TSL. So I just copy it and particular that position, I just defining as a TSL. And into the mail username and the password. So here you have to put your some of the Gmail address and also you have to define that this email address password. So right now I'm just putting one of the Gmail address on here and my personal Gmail address. And also here I just put the password that means this Gmail address password and friends that's all you have to do it's very much easy as I told you before so now I just define all that our SMTP details on particular that position and now I just simply click on the save all so here I just click on the save all and now I already created one of the temporary email address as this one and I also created on the registration with this email address like here. So now I just simply better I just do that things again. Like here, I just click on the login, forget password. And here I just put that password. And now if you click on the same password link, and here you can see it's now showing as we have emailed your password reset link to this email. So if you now go here, there is our temporary email and particular that position here, you can see that is actually the RD and go boss. So now if you open it, so now here you can see Laravel by default send you some of the reset password URL. So here if you click on here, now it's redirected to our author and the password and then the reset. Okay, there's a reset and also with some of the token. So this token will be matched in our database. Like if you go our database reset option like password reset. Here you can see it should be matched with this token. And when it should be done then automatically it should be gone from to this position i will show you like here i get that email address right now i want to add the new password like right now i'm using as a one two three one two sorry one two three one two three one two three okay and also i define one two three two three one two three and now i just reset that password now click on the reset password yes now you can see your password has been received and you locking successfully so i am already logging so now if you click on the go back and now i want to do i want to with um, our previous one like here i just defined one two three four five six seven eight that was my previous password now i want to locking now here you can see it's now showing as a this now do not match with this record so now here i just put our new password three and now click on the login yeah now you can see i am successfully logged in and when it should be the reset then automatically it should be gone from here like i just click on the browse now you see this token is automatically now gone from to this position for education purpose i am using some of the um, temporary email with this email and here i am using that things with the temp email org and you can see by default each and everything is ready made in laravel for the results laravel actually so much popular and very easy to understand so now here i successfully reset our password
but here one things I want to share like if you click on the logout and now I just click on the login and if you forget password so here I put that email address and here I just define that same password reset so some of the times you may get some of the error like this error will be just like that is a failed authentication on SMTP server with username using three possible authentications Laravel Gmail SMTP configuration so this type of one of the error maybe you get okay so this error actually visible for some of the gmail authentication okay that means the gmail security is issues so if you want to do that work then you have to go to this link okay so they have some of the gmail links so it should be redirected to your gmail id and then you here you have to do you have to go your gmail address and here you have to go to that security level that means here and also they have all one of the option so that is actually your gmail option that is a layer security app access and here you have to make the things as a on by default for the google privacy issues is become off so you have to remind that things as a on okay then it should be perfectly working rather than you may get some of the error so i hope you can well understand about it so that's all you have to do for resetting the password in our next video i will show you i will create another form for the update or change password so how can update or change password in Laravel? In our next video, I will show you that things with a live example. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello friend, welcome back. In our previous video, I already discussed about that things with you, how can reset your password from to this position. In this video, I will show you how can change or update your password. For doing this, first of all, we have to do, we have to create one of the controller for this one. Like if you go here, and in our HTTP, there is a controller folder and into the controller folder, there is a auth. So all that authentications related controller in particular that position, like that's for the forget password, there is a locking controller, the register controller, the reset controller. You can see all that controller you will get on particular that position. So for the change password, right now I want to create one of the controller in particular that folder. That means the auth folder. So if you want to create one of the controller, then you have to do, you have to go to your directory. And into this project directory here, I just define as a CMD. And now I want to create one of the controller in our auth. Okay, like that means here in particular that folder here, I want to create one of the controller. So for creating that controller, you have to write down as a PHP artisan, make controller. And then I want to create one of the controller in our auth folder. So you have to define your auth folder name and then your controller name. So I just define our controller name as a change password. And then I just define that controller. So here there is a PHP addition make controller and then the auth folder and into the auth folder, you will be created one of the controller as a change password controller. So now I just click on the enter and now here you can see there is a controller created successfully and in our auth here that is our controller I just created so here I have created that controller as a change password controller I hope you can well understand about it and now I want to create one of the route for the change password so if you want to create the route then you have to go to your routes and there is a web.php in particular that position now i want to first of all load some of the page for the reset password that means for the change password field so first of all i want to load some of the change password page and then i will update it so first of all here i just define that our route url so here i just name it as a change password and then the password okay so this type of on the route i want to create and now our controller name so in our that is our change password controller and here is defining it and into the change password controller i want to create one of the method as an index method and for this route i just name it as a page as a uh, password change dot change okay so this type of name i just defining it on particular that position so here what exactly the things i want to do First of all, I want to load some of the page and where I will match our old password and then I will put our new password. That means here after that, I want to update this password, right? So we have to insert that password newly again. 
So for doing this better, I just want to create another route. So here I just defining that route name. And when you insert it, then you have to define as a post. So here I just define our route as a post route. That means the post method. Okay. And then our URL will be the same. And in our change password controller, I want to create one of the method. So here I just defining one of the method for the update, like as a change password. And for this change password, I just define that name as a password update. Okay, I just define the password update. And also here we have to change one thing like that's the controller I just created in our auth folder. So you have to define your auth folder on particular that position. So here I just define as the auth and then our controller name and after that that is our method. So that is also on same place. So here I just defining our auth folder name and then our controller name and then the method. So I'll create that thing later. First of all, I want to create this method. That means the index method in our change password controller. So now go to that position and here I want to create one of the method as a public function. And here I just define our index method on particular that position. Okay, I hope you can well understand about it. And in particular index method, first of all, I want to load one of the page. Like if you go to our view, like here, um, that is our view page. In our view, that is an auth and there is a password folder. In password here, I want to create one of the page for the change password. Like here, I just created a new file and now I just click on the save as. And here, I just name it as a change dot blade dot php and this page will be like our if you go to our register so that type of field will be needed so for better i just copy all the things from our register page i already discussed about that things with you if you go to the auth folder here there is our register page all that code that's for our logging page code so right now i just copy all the things from our register page okay so i just copy all the things from here and now in our change blade here, I just paste it. So literally I will customize it as per our demand. Okay, so right now I want to do, I want to load that page. So here I already created one of the route as a change password in our auth change controller. That means our change password controller, that is the index method. So into this index method, I want to first of all load this page. That means this change password blade page. So here I just simply added the return. And then I just define the view and here you have to define that URL. That means this URL in our auth folder, then the password folders, and then that is our page. So here I just defining it as the auth. That means the auth folder. After that, there is a password. Okay, I just defining as a password and then our file name as a change. So I just defining it as a change. So first of all, I want to load it. Okay, so here I just defining it. Now let's check this out. I just click on the save all. And now our route is this one. So I just copy it. And now if you go here, now let's check this out. It's perfectly working or not. Uh, better I just go to the, our main directory. And here I just defining as a change password. And now click on the enter. Yes, now you can see our change password is now perfectly loaded. And also I want to do another work like if you click on the login and here right now I already insert some of the data so that is actually email address so here I just define that email address and I just put the password um, 123123123 and now click on the login and here right now I am logging and I also want to add another button on particular that position for the change password. So if you want to do that to work, you have to go to your page like here. That is our of view and the auth and there is a layouts. And here there is an app blade. Into the app blade, you get that things on here. Uh, like that is actually the locking and the register. Here is the logout. So that is actually one of the buttons. So right now I want to create another button on particular that position. So here I just defining as a A. Okay, I just defining one of the A here if. And in particular that area, I just want to create one of the page name as a change password. Okay, I just defining as a change password. And, and here I also want to define one of the route for this one. Like here I just defined the route as a uh, first of all, you have to define the double second bracket 
and particular that position I just define that route okay I just define that route and here I just define the route for this one as a, I already created one of the um, one of the method that is actually the change password that means the password change okay so it should be rejected to particular that position that means the index method so here I just name that route as a password change so for the reasons here I just define that name so I just copy that password change and here in our route area I just simply paste on particular that position and also I want to define one of the class like here I just define one of the bootstrap class as a drop down item Okay, drop down and then I just define the item here that is actually one of the bootstrap class and here I just define the heading and I just put that route I just created that route as a password change and here there is a change password perfect so now if you click on the save all and now if you refresh that page and here if you put your cursor here you can see there is actually another button is added on here there is a change password if you click on the change password it should be detected to our change password url i hope you can well understand about it how the things exactly work so i just call the route name as a password change here i just defining as a password change and into this position i define our controller in our index method and into the index method i call our page right so here i just simply load our this change password page that means the change page so for the reasons it's now visible on here I hope you can well understand about it so now I want to do I want to customize that page right here I want to need one of the field as a old password and email address we do not need it and also I need another field for the password and the confirm password so now first of all I want to go that page link like here that is our change plate and in particular that position here you can see that is actually for the email so here that is like one of the tape so this tape is working for the email so right now I just uh, remove that things from here okay so that is our password and that's the another password so for the name I just want to change it and here I just name it as the old password okay I just define as a password so I just defining as an old password for this one so that will be the whole level and that level means here it, it should be visible on particular that position okay so I just defining as an old password on here and that is our input type and here I just define that name as an old password okay I just define as an old password and also there is a name so in particular that position you have to also update it uh, like here the value so we don't need this value I just name that name and then the error here I have to also define that as a old password so uh, then and name there is a name so value we don't need this value so right now I just remove that things from here and that is auto completed as a old password and also there is a level for name so I just replace it okay so I just define that name as a old name and here also I define that old password on here there is a message and here um, that is for the another field for the password will be needed and also there is a confirm password perfect and also there is a register that means here there is a register button so I just want to uh, change it I want to change it to as a update password okay, I just defining as an update password and then there is actually our form in particular that form that means here that you can see that is actually on the post method and into the post method also you have to define some of the actions like when you inserted it then what exactly it should be take some of the action and for the reasons I already created one of the route here you can see I created one of the route as the auth and change password controller that is a change password method we have to create in our this controller area and also here I just define that name as a password update for this one that, that means this route I hope you can well understand about it and you can see that is actually the post method so for the reasons here I just defining as a post method and in our action I just define our route name so our route name as a password update so I just simply updated that things on here and also here I just defining as a CSRF so it will be inserted all the data so now perfect now let's check this out I just click on the save all and if you now refresh it like I just refresh it yes now you can see there is the old password there is a password, there is a confirm password. 
so here i want to do that type of work like there is an old password so right now i already i'm already logged in with our this user that means the rdn and here there is email address and also they have some of the password so first of all he will match with our this old password okay so he will be matched with this old password and if so if this match then you can insert the new password so that's the things i want to do uh, so i hope you can well understand about it i already have some of the password so this password will be matched with our old password and when it should be the match then you can insert the new password so that's the simple things we have to do so i will continue this process and in our next video i will show you there is a route for the password update and here i already created that one that is actually the change password so in our next video i will show you how we can create that change password method in our change password controller so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in our previous video i already created one of the page as a change plate and here also they have some of the field for the old password password and the confirm password so right now i want to do here right now i'm already logged in and i'm already logged in with some of the password and here if, if you go to the database table here that is actually the password and this password is created automatically the hash password so it should be matched first of all on here so whatever the old password you have, right now you are locked in you have to put that old password so if this password will the match with this one that means this password field then you can actually insert the new password so that's the functionality i want to do for doing this uh, i already created one of the route and here you can see there is actually the change password there is auth there is a change password controller there is a change password that means this method i have to create in our change password controller like if you go to the change and here i already define one of the form action like here i just define that action route as a update password okay that means a password update so now we have to do we have to create this one that means the change password method in our change controller so right now go here and in particular that position i want to create another method as a public and then function and then our method name so here i just defining that method and here first of all we have to do we have to define that request so here i just define as a request and also here i just take one of the parameter as a request okay i just defining as a request on particular that position so first of all here i want to validate two of this like the old password will be the required and password field will be the required so that's the two field first of all i want to make the things as a required for doing this here i just simply added one of the uh, required conditions like i want to validate it okay so now if you do that work like with this here i just defining as a validate okay i just defining as a validate and into the validate first of all with this request so here i just defining that request okay with this request you have to define your field so here you have to defining it with the array so i just simply added some of the array and first our first array will be our field name our field name if you go here uh, that is for our old password like here you can see that name is the old password field so i want to make that old password field as a required and also password field will be the required okay so for the reasons here i just uh, that is actually the name i defining as a old password so now i just defining that field name as a old password and i just put that things as a required okay i just put that things as a required and also they have the another field i also want to take another field uh, that is actually the password field so i just copy it and here i take another one that means the password field also will be needed that means the required okay so here it is defining as a required and then i just put that things as a confirm i just define that things as a confirm and here i just define that array so in our last one you don't need to add that comma on particular that position and after that i want to do that one of the work like right now i am already logged in as i told you before so right now i am already logging and i am logging with some of the password so in our database field that is a that is a password field here already they have some of the hash password right so first of all i just want to notify that that which user already logged in so if you want to do that work first of all here you have to do i just define one of the uh, variable as a hash as password 
okay hashes password and in this password first of all which user is already logged in so here i just defining with this auth okay so with this auth i just defining as a user so which user is already logging with some of the password so for the reasons here i just defining our password field so our password is this one i just defining it on particular that position i hope you can well understand about it right now i am already logging with some of the password here you can say i am already logged in so here which password is user already logged in first of all he will be take that one i just take that things with this variable now i just want to put some of the condition like here i just define only the if condition and if already they have some of the hash password like when you inserted some of the password okay within all from a locking page it should be created one of the hash password in our password field right so first of all you will be check with this one and whatever the password you put on particular that position you should be check with this field and then with this field and when two of these will be matched then you can actually insert the new password on particular that position so that's the things i want to do so first of all here i want to check with this hash like here you have to define as a hash and first of all i want to check it okay i just define the check and which request you actually pass so here uh, i just define that request which request you pass from your old password field that means here so whatever the things you put on particular that position it should be matched with on particular that area okay so here i want to do that work so so here i just define that request our old password from our old password field so here i just defining it and also it should be matched with our current user right and then for the current user i take that variable so i just copy it so first of all here with this hash password will be checked if our old password request will be matched with our existing user password then it should be insert the data into the database field right so for now i want to do that work for the reasons here um, i just take another variable as the user and here i defining as a user model okay user model he will be find so he will be find our auth id so here i just defining as a auth and then our auth id okay so which user actually already logged in so here he will be matched with two of these on here and after that i want to do i want to add our uh, password field that means here then this password will be saved again in our database password field area right so now go to that position like here with our user and here now in our password field i just defining it as a password and now this password will be inserted in our database table that means in our password area again and when it should be inserted i want to do i want to make that things as a hash password that means it should be automatically created one of the hash password on particular that position for the reasons i just defining as a hash you will be create make one of the hash passwords so i just defining as a make and here i just defining that password which password you just requested okay like with this request uh with this request uh, what are the field uh, you pass that things from here okay so for the reasons i just defining as a request and our password that means this password so i just defining as a password i hope it should be very much clear to you what exactly the things i want to do so after the find out the id first of all it should be matched with our old password then the current user will be able to change the another password and this password field will be also inserted in our database with the hash password so here i just defining it on particular that position and after that i want to save it so here with that user i want to save it that means the save our new password and here one things like when this data will be inserted okay like when if you put the old appropriate old password the password and the confirm password and if you click on the update when it should be updated then i want to do i want to make that user as a logout okay so automatically he will be logged out when the new password will be entered for the reasons here i just defining as the auth and here i just simply added the logout Okay, I just simply added the logout function on here and when this data will be inserted, then I want to return it So here I just defined as a returned Okay, return and then I want to redirect 
redirect i want to he will be redirected to the or another route okay that means he will be redirected to our logging page again so i just defining as a, a route a route and here i just defining it it should be redirected to our logging page so i just defining as a logging page and also if you want to show some of the message so i already discussed about that things with you with some message so here i just defining some of the message as a i just take one of the variable as a success okay success message so with some of the message so i just defining which message you want to visible like when this password will be changed then i want to show some of the message as a password password is is changed successfully okay so this type of message i want to display so it should be displayed in our logging page with i just defined some of the success message with some of the success message will be detected okay for this you see i just defined that with function and after that if you want to add some of the conditions like that is actually our this one okay so it's actually finishing on particular that position so after that here i want to add one of the else condition else what exactly you will be do okay i just defined the another else and here that is actually for our method so better i just put that things on here uh, that is one okay perfect so into the else here he will be detected to the another page like here i just better copy it and here i just defining as a return and redact to our back page so here i just define the route okay redact and here i just define the back so right now i don't need this so he'll be go to the back and with some of the error message so here i just defining as the error okay so i have to also visible that all that message so i will show you that things later and now he'll be else he'll be display some of the error message as a current password is invalid okay so this type of a message rather than he'll be do so when this password will be changed then it should be show some of the with some of the message as a this message else here i just put another condition he'll be redirected to our back and into the back he'll be redirected to so with some of the error message as a current password is invalid and here also one things we have to load like here you can see i just call it as a auth here i call it our user model and also here i call it as a hash so we have to load all the things we have to use it on particular that position so first of all here i just define our use and here i just define as the app and if the app here i just defining as a user model so here i just first of all load our user model on particular that position and also i have to add our auth that means the auth and the hash so we have to also call it on particular that area so it's actually on use and then you have to define it as a illuminate better i just defining it okay like i just copy it and here is defining it illuminate and after that you have to go to the support and then here we have to defining as a fades okay fades and after the fades then you have to define it as a auth that means this auth you have to defining it on here okay and also i want to define the our hash so hash will be the same place so now that is another one is a hash so i just define that our hash on particular that position so that's all you have to do i hope you can well understand about it what exactly the things i did on particular that position so if you have any query just let me know about it i will answer it again to you okay so I'll continue this process and in the next video I will show you how you can display your all that message like like when it should be inserted then it should be show some of the success message so how you can do that work in the next video I will show you that things with a live example so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video I will discuss about that things with you here I created one of the method as a change password method and particular that position I just defining the required field and also you'll be checked with our old password then it will be saved with the new password a new password will be also saved with the hash password that means when these two of will be the match then it should be updated and when it will be updated then it should be detected to a logging page okay in our logging route with this success message and here that is actually the message 
and else when it should be not matched with our old password then also i defining as a else and else you should be redacted to on particular that position and here one things like you can see i just make that things as a name as a name field to the old password so you have to make that as a password type like here if you go to that change password and here that is actually the our field name so that is a type so right now that is a type as a text type for the reason system visible like that way so i just define that type as a password so i just defining as a password you want to save all and now if you refresh it and now if you change it yeah you can see now it's actually password type so now in this video first of all i want to show that our this message that means the success message and also the error message an error message will be directed to our back and back means our change password that means this space okay so it'll be directed to on particular that position so here first of all i want to display some of the error message okay like here uh, that is our change password on particular that area mm, like here i is defining that message on particular that position okay i is defining it on here so i already added some of the alert i already discussed about that thing so if you go to the md bootstrap here you will get some of the um, things like here if you go to that components and here there is alerts and into the alert here like that is for the error i want to choose this one so that is one two three four that means here one two three four that means this day okay so for now i want to do i want to display that things on here so first of all here we have to add our get our this error message that means this one so here you can do that work with using the if conditions like here is defining as if and i just simply and if okay and that if condition and particular that area first of all i just defining with the session like here i just defining as a session and in particular this session i want to add our id that means here i just define that that means this one as a error message so i just defining that error message on here and into the particular position i want to display it so for now i just copy that day for the alert so i just paste it and in particular that position i want to defining it that with the session okay so here i just defining it with this one session and here i just defining the session with our error message that means here that is the error message so i just simply paste that particular that position so now let's check this out i just click on the save all and now if you refresh that page and now i just put some of the inappropriate one of the old password and the new password and the confirm password now i just click on the update password yes now you can see it's now showing some of the error message as a current password is invalid so here i just defining it on particular that position so that is the message is now visible with our alert message alert alert danger and also i defining it when it should be not matched then it should be added the else it will be redacted to our back page that means our back page means our this change password page okay and with the error so that is the current password is invalid so that the message is now visible on here and also i added another validations like here when it should be successfully updated that means when these two old password and the current password will be the match then he will be inside that data that means they will be save that data and then you should be show some of the success message and here i just define that redacted to a locking page so now go to our auth and here that is our locking plate uh, so in particular that position okay so here i want to actually visible it like here uh, for now it should be just like that same here i just copy it and here i just paste on particular that position and now our message will be as a success so i just copy it and here i just defining as a success and as a success because when it should be inserted there it should be rejected to our success alert okay so for the success alert uh, like here it should be as a green so three and three is that one two three that means this one so i just better copy it and here our success alert i just defining it on particular that position so now let's check this out that's all you have to do okay so now i just click on the save all now if everything okay it should be work like i just click on the refresh 
So right now I am already logging and now our locking is the RDN and that is our email address and I just defining the password as a one two three one two three one two three okay like here I just defining as one two three one two three one two three so now I put some of the conditions if this will be matched with our current user logging password then it will be able to change the password okay now I want to add the new password as a one two three four five six seven eight nine and also I define one two three four five six seven eight nine now if everything okay should be work now i just click on the update password yes now you can see that the password is changed successfully and when this password is changed automatically you can see i'm log out from to this position so that's the things i just defining it on here when it should be log out then it should be redirected to a locking page so right now i'm already redirected to a locking page and also I just defining with some of the message as a password is changed successfully so now this message is now visible on particular that position and also I define another conditions like when this will be the save then automatically this authentication user will be logged out now you can see before I was logged out when I change that password automatically I am logged out from this position so now if you're logging with your old password now let's check this out is working or not so now I just put as an email address and here I just define the password 1231231123. Okay, so that was my previous password. Now click on the login. Yes, now you can see it's now showing as a do not match with the record. So now I just put our new password that I changed. So here I just defining as a 123456789. Click on the login. Yeah, now you can see it's perfect. Now I am already logged in. I hope you can well understand about it. it's perfectly now working on particular that position so that's all you have to do for change that password functionalities now you can change it you can update it with using this method okay so it's pretty much easy that the reason i actually chose the laravel laravel is very much easy you can create this type of authentication very easily so now you can see it's now perfectly now work on particular that area so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello friend welcome back in a previous video i already discussed about that things with you how can change or update your password functionality from to these positions like if you locked it and now if you go to the change password and here one things i want to share with you like here if you put the your old password that means right now i'm already logging with the one of the password i just said one two three four five six seven eight nine and now i want to uh, add the new password like as a one two three four five one two three four five and here i also defining it okay i just defined the new password now click on the update password so when it should be updated now you see it's now redirected to a logging page but now if you click on the go back now here you can see after that logout you can access that change password page so i am right now already logged out but i can access that page so you have to actually prevent it so you can prevent it very easily in laravel then you have to do you have to add some of the constructor for this one like go to your controller there is a change password controller on particular that position here i want to define that with the public like here i just define as a public and then function and after the function here i just define all the space and double underline then the construct so I just define the construct on particular that position. So with this construct here, you have to define your middleware for the authentication. Like I just defining as a with this. Okay, with this here, I just defining our middleware. And into the middleware, I just defining our auth. Okay, that means the auth folder, I just defining as a some of the privilegization on particular that area. So now that's all you have to do. So here I is defining it on particular that area. So now if you click on the save all and now if you refresh it like here I just refresh that page. Yes, now you see it's now automatically redirected to you the logging page. Right now you are not able to access the change password page when you log out. I hope you can well understand about it. So that's the things I defining on particular that position. So friend, that is very much basic Laravel default authentication system. How can work with this one? So if you have any query, 
if you face any problem or if you have any query if you want to update that section then let me know about it i will create another video and add that video into the course section so with your help i want to make this course perfect for you so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video